Have you been in an accident that wasn't your fault? Feeling overwhelmed and unsure what to do next? Look no further. The personal injury attorneys at Phillips Law Firm are here to help. Phillips Law Firm understands that accidents can turn your life upside down. That's why they're dedicated to fighting for the compensation you deserve and to making the process as stress-free as possible. Don't wait any longer. Call now, 1-800-JUSTICE, or visit justiceforyou.com. Looking to give the gift of pleasure? Add a little high heat to keep the desire burning. Or maybe you just need a little self-care. Come to Lovers for the best lingerie and toys to keep things hot this holiday. Save 20% on your purchase with Lovers Afterglow Rewards. Just mention Love 20 at one of our 18 Western Washington locations. Offer valid with free Lovers Afterglow Rewards membership until November 30th. Some exclusions apply. Your home is going into foreclosure and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. There's a YouTuber out there. His name is Matthew. You're going to want to check out this video on the BJ Miggs page of KISW.com because he is singing the entire orchestra in the Indiana Jones theme. He's doing all the parts, like uh, the all the instruments, like the trumpets, the trombones, the flutes. His voice is doing all that stuff. Matthew has a lot of free time on his hands because I watched this video, and it's very impressive. But I was, the whole time I'm watching, I'm thinking... He has a lot of time to be able to pull this off. Have you seen the video? No, I'm looking forward to seeing this. But if what you're saying is true, yeah, I mean, I would, you know, <laughs> like, how do you how do you get all this done, sir? Because there's a lot of instruments in that. And I'm not judging him. He has a lot of free time in his hands, and he used his free time to the best possible way by creating this. <laughs> so we have the video, which you really should go check out. But also, here's what it sounds like of him doing the entire Indiana Jones theme. It's just his voice playing all the parts. I sound just like him, right? Yeah, you sure do. He's a younger dude, too. Yeah, he's got time. You think if his, uh, his place of employment sees this video, they instantly drug test him? Yeah. This guy's got to be stoned. Yeah. You know, I can see this being some sort of college project. Dude, he's done this for a lot of things, though. Oh, well, this is the first time I heard of this dude. Yeah, he apparently has like 76,000 subscribers. I don't think Danny's going to be one of them based on the look of, of pure oh, disgust that he has on his face. An, I am out. That's an amazing theme. How can you not love that? Well, he probably hasn't, he hasn't done seen. Fallout Boy yet. That's yeah. the problem. That's uh, fair. Yeah. yeah. I also yeah. have never seen Indiana Jones. That's so what I thought. Idea. Yeah, I was afraid to ask that question, but I, you answered it. I thought that was Star Wars, to be honest, or Star Trek, one of the two. Okay. You know, All right, so I'm what's more annoying? He hasn't seen Indiana Jones. Or Danny hasn't seen the Terminator films. Oh, I think Indiana Jones is like an American classic, isn't it? See, and this isn't one of my fantasies, even though it sounds like it would be. If I had to tie up Danny in a room <laughs> and force him to watch a movie or a series of movies, I think I'm going with the Terminator movies over Indiana Jones. I like the Terminator movies better, but I think America would say they love Indiana Jones This isn't more. about America. This is about BJ. But oh. have you been on the Indiana Jones ride at Disney? Yes. Yeah, he's done that many a times, I'm assuming. And, and you don't you know what you're riding. Movies, so that's why I'm leaning towards Indiana Jones. Let's tie him up. It's yeah. a two and a half minute ride. He doesn't need to watch a movie in Thank order you, to... Steve. Yes, you do. I haven't seen most of the movies on the rides at Disney World or Disneyland, okay. and I still enjoy them. They were tying you up, Vicky, too. yeah, we got two people to tie up. Oh, boy. <laughs> And Vicky knows how to tie people up, let me tell you. So you both are getting tied up and you're watching these movies. I haven't seen any of the Harry Potter and the Hogwarts movies. And, and uh, yeah. then we, we did that right at Universal. I still loved it. Yeah, you did. But boy, I looked at you. You're like, you didn't know who the people were. You didn't know how special it was that Hologram Harry was talking to us. You didn't care. No, I knew it was important because my wife seemed to dig it. So I'm there to support <laughs> my wife her. Seemed to dig it. Yeah, you know, your wife's a big fan of those movies, actually.
He's actually done the uh, the the orchestra piece for Halo, the the, the video game. That, oh, that, okay. He also did the the Imperial March. Oh hey. man, I'd love to hear that someday. I don't know if Danny could pull that one up. Yeah. I'm sure I could just do it for you. Ba 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 ba. Yeah, that's great. Ba 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 da 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 da. <laughs> yeah, that's no, that's really good. Thanks. No. Uh, yeah. Uh, you want to hear the actual verse? I would like to hear anything at this point. Uh, you you find anything at all. I uh, wonder how long it takes him to make some of these. Like, I wish he would put that in, like, the description of his YouTube 200 videos. 200 days. Do you think it takes several days? Oh, yeah, it has to. Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, the video, putting together the video also, because he has a video of him singing every single part. Yes. And then he kind of layers it all in there, and it's pretty cool to watch. That's, uh, yeah, I, I do. Uh, yeah, it is, he does a good job. You're right. And it shows, like, every single instrument that he's playing. And it looks like multiple instruments, too, because he's doing the full orchestra, it looks like. And is John Williams, he's still alive, right? I don't know. Oh. I, I really don't know. I haven't heard of John Williams in a long time to know if he is still alive. Because he's the guy who created the, he's the orchestra guy that put together that. Here we go. Oh, this is the Imperial March. Much better than what you did. I can do that. No, you can't. This is even more ominous. We need more bass. Yeah, yeah, right? Like that, yeah. Okay, you know what? This does not sound threatening at all. Some, yeah, this is like some like, pansy-ass Darth Vader. <laughs> this is wow. like BJ Vader. Do you have the? Do, do, do we have the Imperial March somewhere in your box? I don't think I have it. Oh, oh, I'm, Apparently, I'm, he did this because he got COVID and he had to stay off campus for two weeks. So he did this in two weeks, I guess. Oh, according see? to all this right. comment. All right, I'll see. I have to know how to spell Imperial before I can. <laughs> yeah. Do I have? Let me see if I have. It. <laughs> No, that's Star Wars. I think I might. Uh, I, I thought I you had it. it. Yeah, I got it. Hold on. Okay. Wait, I think Dan. I think I might have. Oh, it. So you don't need to. Hey, it there it is. Ah, oh, yeah. no, yeah, no. no that was it. good. That was good. A lot yeah. of bass. No. Yeah, that's not it. Either. All right, Danny. I think he has. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah. It's ominous. Scary. Yeah. There's a little bit more bassiness. There's more this. balls to this. Yeah. Way better. Yeah. And John Williams is still alive. He's 91 years Ooh. old. Boy, the orchestra business has been good to his health. It'd be cool to hear his opinion. I'm sure he'd love, he would love this. I oh, think yeah. That, that has to be one of the more flattering things. To have somebody spend all that time to recreate something that you created. Yeah, he did it. I, I like his version. That's yeah. for sure. Uh, but you're right. His, they, they, it's a little more ominous, the original. It would be funny, though, if he was a cranky 91-year-old man, and he's just like, that sucks. Yeah, well, well you get out of here. Get, get, get off my orchestra pit. Delete your page. What is YouTube, anyway? That's fair. <laughs> well, it's very possible he doesn't know. Yeah, it's, it's 91 years old. Yeah. I wonder when the last time he did anything. That was the first thing I just thought as well. Like, what was the last recording that he did? Yeah. And a lot of folks, uh, I like to bring this up every time because he's been doing it for a long time. And uh, he, back in the day when he was Johnny Williams, and he did the old Lost in Space themes that uh, from the original TV show with Dr. Smith, Oh, the pain. Uh, and that's where I first heard of Johnny Williams. And then, of course, he went on beyond that and did amazing stuff. All right. Since we're getting super nerdy about John Williams, what do you think is the biggest quote-unquote hit that he has made? The, it's a, an orca- orchestral song, of course, but like one that charted on the Billboard charts. Oh, my. Which it, means then, uh, is it something we know? It's something we know, and it hit number 32 in the Billboard charts. One oh, of his songs. One of his songs? Yeah. Oh, man. I bet it's a song I don't think I knew he did. I, no, I think you'll know it's one of the songs he did. Oh, okay. Um, I'll give you a hint. 1975. Oh, 1970 came in at number 32 in the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Whoa, what was out in 1975? Was it Jaws? That's John Williams? Yeah. Whoa. This is John. God, he did so many amazing themes. I didn't realize this was him. And then uh, in 1977, he had a song that made it to number 10 on the Billboard charts. Okay. It's a, it's a movie that you all obviously know and love. Oh, Star 19, Wars. Oh, 1977. Yeah. Here I am going, are you playing Dominic the Donkey again? No. No, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Star Wars made it to number 10. And then one more he did that made the top 100 came in at number 13 back in 1978. 
This is forever ago. 1913 and 1978? Yeah. Is it uh, Alien? It's an Alien-based movie. Alien-based movie. E.T.? No. no. Uh, uh, Close Encounters? Close Encounters of oh. the Third Time. He did the music for that, what was, too? How did that one go? Da, na, 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 na. Is that one? Da, na, na. Yeah, I think so. I think that that's, oh. the, that's the theme I remember. See if you can find it, Danny. I'm not doing I it justice it bom, 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 bom. No, that's 2001. Bom, 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 that's a good one, too. I don't, know, I don't know who did that one, but that Whoever is Whoever did that game. one deserves a high five. Uh, here you go. High five. John Williams, though, says, hold my beer. I'll show you all the ones I'm going to do. Close Encounters of the Third Kind came in at thir- hit 13 on the Billboard charts back in 78. So people were like... Loving that song like was is popular music, yeah. And the Star Wars theme, like people were playing it in their cars, like buying forty five. Did singles. a top forty radio station back in those days play this? I know. It's I so, don't think so. How did it chart then? Oh, this is this is this is close to the third kind. The theme song. All right, this is the one Vicky sent me. Uh, <laughs> says the mountain. Oh, I don't think that's. I'm not sure that's the one. This can't be the one. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it doesn't sound like the... This is from the soundtrack from Close Encounters. Oh, that's not no, the so theme. The one. theme from... Yeah. We want the theme, not <laughs> one did. of the songs from the movie. I asked for the theme. Epic that's what it gave me. Fail. Oh, well, sorry, Here Steve. We okay, I'm going to have to fast forward. This says main theme. Oh, really? I don't know this Oh, one. so... Maybe this is the main theme, but the one I'm thinking of is when they communicate. Yes, with the alien ship, where because <laughs> they, they it's, the alien ship communicates in music. Yeah, in lights and stuff. If I remember a long time ago, in a um, not galaxy far, far away, because it was right here on Humanity Land. Yeah, that's what I remember about Close Encounters. That was sad. Yeah, <laughs> that one sounds like a ringtone from the '80s. Yeah. Or 90s when my dad had that brick phone. It was an epic movie for the time. It really, really was. Um, and yet nobody cares. Like, it didn't last. Like, it's it, it, it was a great movie from Spielberg and all that. And it did not last. Yeah, I remember trying to watch it with my dad and be like, this sucks. Yeah, <laughs> it was too slow. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it was very, very slow. Yeah, I was like, uh, oh, this sucks, dad. I got to go. Yeah, peace out. I'll go play some video games upstairs. <laughs> There's a teacher that's in trouble, and why? Well, for letting his students watch Winnie the Pooh, and he's in trouble. Okay. Steve will tell you all about this. Got the Migs report for you at 617 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. It's time to talk about Felix, the pet insurance brand made just for cats. Starting at under $1 a day, you can get whisker-to-tail protection with a plan as unique as your cat. Sorry, dogs. This customizable coverage is exclusively for feline friends. Learn more at FelixCatInsurance.com. That's FelixCatInsurance.com. Get it? Meow. Insurance is underwritten by Independence American Insurance Company and produced by Independence Pet Group. Pre-existing conditions are not covered. Visit FelixCatInsurance.com slash terms for all terms and limitations. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. If you're hearing an informative newscast right now, well, then you must not be listening to BJ and Mix. Live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle, this is The Mix Report. Well, thanks, you guys, and thanks to Palace Law for giving us The Mix Report. Today is the day for everybody to enjoy being on the farm. City folks just don't get it. That's right. Use Farmers Only because today's National Farmers Day. Oh, thank you, Farmers. You, I, I, I like a lot of the stuff that you grow. What's your favorite? No, I'm not going to ask you that. What's your favorite thing that a farmer grows? <laughs> of course, it's corn. Uh, uh, we don't need to have that conversation. Or pumpkins right now. I guess it's pumpkin season, right? It's pumpkin season. Corn is good. And don't forget the dairy farmers. Yeah, how about a cow? Yeah. I love meat. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. they're, they're on the farm. That's yeah, a very good are. point. Yep. Yep. It's also pulled pork day, so pigs, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's also National Savings Day. I've yet to figure out how to celebrate oh. that, I'll tell you. Especially with some of the purchases that I seem to make. Yeah, it's not easy to make savings. But most importantly, today, it's International Moment of Frustration Scream Day. So I don't know what that exactly means, but maybe you scream. Ah! Like yes. David Lee Roth, I don't know. Into a pillow, perhaps? H- scream into a pillow, or just open up the window and scream loud. Remember Let everyone that? hear it. 
That old classic uh, movie network, which was about the broadcasting business. I think it was TV broadcasting. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. And everybody like yell, he yelled it out the window or everybody was yelling it out the window. My memory doesn't serve me, but that was that was what they were doing. Screaming. Maybe scream like this girl. Oh, you remember her? Whale girl. Oh, yes. What was she so upset about? Do we remember? I don't remember, to be honest with what you. What about the Richard Sherman girl? She's That's my so favorite. funny. I was about to say. <laughs> She's the best. Uh, that is, uh, I wish that we had Niners fans screaming about us that way, but I think we're going to be screaming about the Niners that way this year. Or maybe you go to a fair and you just had to scream when they're doing like some kind of a karaoke thing, and you're just a young, cute little girl that's wearing flip flops, uh, like a little floral dress, and she gets up on stage to sing some karaoke. And this video has been making rounds and it's going viral because she decided to sing this classic song by the band Drowning Pool. And we all know it. We love it. It's called Bodies. I love her. <laughs> yes. She looks so cute up there. Oh, yes. They yes. just tore it down. I'd be so fired up if I was walking around the Washington State Fair and this cute, adorable kid with a little jean jacket, like I said, a little floral dress, and just got up there and started singing bodies. Dude, absolutely. I mean, it's just, it, it does not fit the image, and it is so awesome, that mashing up of cuteness and... Now, most would say Winnie the Pooh is a cute film. Yeah. Uh, Save for a bunch of fourth graders to watch. Well, a math teacher in Florida got in trouble because he decided, hey, let's watch Winnie the Pooh for all the kids in his class, the fourth graders. Here's the problem. He had them watch Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Yep, the live action oh, horror film. Oh, no. I never even saw this. I saw that it was being made, but I never even watched it. I heard it was so bad. Come on. So, yeah, the regular Winnie the Pooh, probably fine for a bunch of nine-year-olds. Yes. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, maybe not so much. But he asked the kids what they wanted to watch, and they picked it. And then some of them asked for him to turn it off, and he wouldn't. So I don't know which ones thought this would be funny. So he lost it. He obviously lost it. They watched it for about 20 to 30 minutes. And it's a pretty gnarly film. I haven't watched it, but I, I've seen some of the trailers. And it no, looks, I think Winnie, doesn't Winnie get, like, I think Winnie gets offed. I don't know. Or, or is, Winnie the, is Winnie the killer? Oh. Like Winnie's the killer. It's a live action thing. It's really oh, creepy. Yeah. It, it, it's done well with the critics. The critics seem to love it on Rotten Tomatoes. It's got a solid 3%. Oh, three percent does it? Yeah, I don't know if any of the nine-year-olds have uh, reviewed yeah. it. What about since. yeah? But what about the crowd? What's the crowd think of it? <laughs> uh, where is that? Fifty percent. Wow. With a hundred plus verified. Who the ratings? hell is watching that movie? Yeah, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of people apparently. Um, man, that's just. I want to know why he did that. I think he lost it. He was done with these kids. He's like, I'll show you. Was this his way to quiet quit? Yeah, I think so. Not so quiet. Let's watch Winnie the Pooh. Blood and honey. Yeah, dude, that is that. No way, man. All right. Yeah, I'm uh, allergic to uh, horror films for nine year olds. Apparently. Well, you're back, buddy. I knew you could do it. Did you see that story that happened in Colorado where apparently some guy was on a train and people were like, "Oh, it looks like he got footage of Bigfoot." No. Taking a poop. No. Someone's trying to figure out what the hell is going on, but yeah, he's uh, he's on a train. He noticed something that was going on. And he started filming it, and it does kind of look like Bigfoot. Or maybe somebody in a Bigfoot suit that's just out there. And he he put it up there and everyone's discussing it. I don't know if it's necessarily Bigfoot. I'm trying to find the footage for you to see. But it is kind of funny. Come on. I mean, really. Oh, all It's right, right there. Oh, that, that's got to be a dude. You think that's just a random dude that decided to just walk in the... I mean, it's it's not like in like a very like normal spot to just randomly be walking. Yeah, you're right. Maybe it is. That's hard to say. What's going on there? And he does look brown and hairy. Or is it Swatch that heard maybe that the, the Sonics are coming back and he's making okay. his pilgrimage? That and is, it does look like he's taking a poop. Dude, that is a bipedal creature. That's for sure. And you're right. It does look like he's just bending down to take a poop. But is it Chewbacca? Yeah. That's nuts. That can't be big. That can't be a Bigfoot guy. Danny, have you seen this video? That does it's look... It's hilarious. It almost looks like it's staged. You think it's it stays between he's in cahoots with this guy? Has to be, because he's walking like a regular dude. Right. He's, well, he's kind walking of, like Bigfoot. But he's casual. Like, he says, hey, da, da, da. And then he's like, and I think that's probably, they think, they'll believe you're Bigfoot because you're taking a dump in the middle of nowhere. He, he apparently went to the conductor on the train. He's like, is this some kind of elaborate prank for Halloween? And then they're like, no, we don't do that kind of stuff. 
Wow. So, so I don't so, know if he's squatting to hide or squatting to poop, but Bigfoot's out there, man. Or is he just in uh, Colorado? Well, that is so bizarre. Okay. It's kind of strange. Yeah. He's not blending in very well. I was going to say, after all these years of all these people just having all these random, like, random Bigfoot sighting parties, like, hey, let's go look for Bigfoot. No one's ever found Bigfoot. The only time you ever see it is like a blurry picture, and you're like, that can't be him. All of a sudden, we catch him from a guy that's on a train in Colorado, and he's just taking a crap. Well, I mean, this, nature calls, I guess. At this point, though, shouldn't, like, the government, like, the Wild and Game Commission or somebody go out there and go, okay, let's find out what the heck that was? Bigfoot. Well, all right. I mean, I, I think if that's true, we should go out and check what that was. I mean, I would. I mean, that that does look suspicious. It's probably a dude for whatever reason running around in Colorado with a, you know, a hairy, uh, hairy Bigfoot costume. But man, that that, that actually is Bigfoot, and that was him just like dro- dropping a deuce. Man, I hope he's got some good toilet paper. Yeah, I he's hairy. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I think that's just like dogs. He's gonna have to figure it out. You think he's just gonna be just like scooting? Yeah, he's got to scoot. <laughs> yeah, so the boot scoot boogie. Hey, I don't know if you were watching any baseball yesterday. Sure BJ, was, buddy. How about them Diamondbacks sure beating the Dodgers? Was. They won all three of the games. They swept the Dodgers moving on to the next round, but they made history. They blasted. They had three home runs already in the bottom of the third when Christian Walker looked like he hit a fourth home run. Turned out it was a foul, but then next pitch, he hits a home run. Four home runs in one inning. That's the first team in postseason history. Yeah, Lance Lynn, dude. You should have seen the look on his face. Dude, the, 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 the play-by-play announcer is doing it. Was, it was fantastic. Here's the call. Right field. Hayward toward the line. Near the foul pole. Fair ball. Home run. Might be worth the challenge. The That's camera a doesn't one. lie in this case, and it looks foul. Yeah. The goal on the field is confirmed. Foul ball. That was a historical call right there. Never in the postseason has there been four home runs in an inning. Ever? Ever. More than 100 years ago. Postseason history. Wow. So, Christian Walker has the home run erased and then hits the next pitch to the moon. To the moon. There's your fourth home run. Man, Arizona's just rocking right there. That's our boy Bob Costas we were talking about the other day. Come making that call. All right, there it is. And man, the, the the fans were just going ape ass, dude. It was nuts. Back to back to back to back home runs, and you know, and again, this is another team that got the the, the big rest. Yep. And go out the, again for the second year in a row. Dodgers had the won the division, went out. Uh, Astros beat the Minnesota Twins uh, three to two, so they're moving on to the American League Championship Series. And uh, who are they taking on? The Texas Rangers. It's the Battle of Texas. Yeah. That's going to be a fun series. Seventh American League Championship Series in a row for the Astros. The Phillies beat the Braves 10-2. to They now have a 2-1 series lead in that one. So there you go. That's yeah, the so the Astros, like last year, the only team that won their division that will move on to the championship series. Uh, the bye has killed almost everybody, and it might be killing the Braves, too, because, like you said, the Philadelphia Phillies have a 2-1 lead. Uh, Thursday night football that's happening tonight. Dun, 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 dun. The Taylor Swifts are taking on the Sierras. <laughs> That's right. Really? Yeah, it's yeah. Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Denver Broncos. Nice. And don't worry, boys and girls. I saw a news report that said Taylor Swift's going to be there. Oh, and a lot God. of people were worried. Oh, I would love it if they end, up like, they end up like bumping into each other in a suite and they get into a fight. That would be pretty awesome. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Man, if the Broncos lose, which chances are they're going to. Yeah. I mean, what do you do if you're if you're if you're the owners, the managers, the general managers? You got Russell Wilson. He'll be what one in five. Yeah. Sean Payton, this expensive coach that you brought on board, not really changing yeah. the, the the culture there. Uh, nope. Wow. Yeah, this is. A, I just wish we had their draft pick. <laughs> I know. <laughs> See, I'd be more excited about it. I, I kind of feel bad for us now because we don't. I don't care. If, like if they lose, you know, I want, I don't let them have a great season. I don't, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. But. I mean, as a bitter ex-girlfriend, I always like to see him do bad. Well, the Seahawks, of course, they'll be playing this weekend. Hopefully they uh, beat the, the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah. That's going to be a tough one. The Bengals might have found how to, how, found out how to win games again for a well, while. Joe Burrow's, he's pleased. He's healthier. So that's yeah. a good thing for them. But yeah. Hopefully our defense continues to play the way that they did against the New York Giants. I mean, Grant's a different team, but, you know, hopefully that energy continues. Where's Tanya Harding? Not that I want to condone Jeez, or advocate man. anything, but I, if she could somehow swing something towards uh, Joe Burrow's calf, I'd be happy. Tonight, we've got our Seattle Kraken hopefully oh. going to bounce back from that Come loss. On. They're in Nashville. 
taking on well the Smashville Predators. All right, that is Jay. a team. That is a place where I would love to go see a hockey game. I don't know. It's not going to happen this year, but maybe next year if I have a couple extra bucks, make a trip, go to Nashville and watch the crack and play the Nashville Predators. I hear that arena is just rocking. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah the, 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 the fans in Nashville have totally embraced that team over the years, and it's a fun spot to go watch hockey from what I hear. That get. would be cool because yeah. you, know, you and I went on the road to see a Stars game, and we didn't even have a hockey team back then, and that was a fun experience. And, I mean, I feel like the team didn't even realize that they had a hockey team because there wasn't a lot of people at that right. game. That's why we were able to get those tickets we relatively easy. Good, yeah. Yeah, good cheap seats. Yeah, we did. Hey, the weather, it's going to be 63 degrees. We have some sun later on today. Thanks to Snoqualmie Casino for giving us the major report. And that's what's up. Did you say we're going to see some sun? Yes. Man, man, I am so looking forward to that. The same. Man, it's been a... <laughs> Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. Traditionally, mint sauce is served with what kind of meat? Men sauce? Mint sauce. <laughs> no. Sausage. I do love men sauce. No. Oh, oy, oy, uh, oy. Mint sauce ah! with ham? No. Corned beef? <laughs> no. Or- there are just some sur- there's just things that a father should never hear, and that's something I don't want to hear ever again. Oh, I missed it. What was that? That's fine. Good. Glad you missed it. Just gonna leave it that way. Fine. Uh, we were looking for lamb, by the way. Uh, I don't know what you put men's sauce on. You're gonna have to f- consult a cookbook for that. Uh, Turkey. Oh, that's. <laughs> you want a shot at beating Steve? You got a two oh six eight oh three rock. We're gonna play beat Migs at six forty seven on the rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. What's the difference between filing for bankruptcy and credit counseling? Uh, credit counseling is a is a useful process in some circumstances, but it does show up on your credit. In fact, from a credit scoring standpoint, credit counseling shows up just like a bankruptcy, so it's going to affect your credit as negatively as filing bankruptcy. In credit counseling, the idea is, is that a credit counselor works with your creditors on your behalf to try to lower interest rates or work out payment plans with your creditors uh, to, to pay back your debt over time. Uh, in credit counseling, you almost always pay back 100% of the debt, sometimes at lower interest. And of course, some creditors will participate in that process and some won't. Um, so you're usually left with kind of a mixed uh, result with credit counseling and of course, a high payment. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. From the very beginning, your kids mean everything to you. That means you do anything for them, especially if they're at risk. So when it comes to type 1 diabetes, screen it like you mean it. Because even if just one person in the family has it, your child is up to 15 times more likely to get it too. Screen it like you mean it. Because type 1 diabetes can develop at any age. And once you get results, you can get prepared for your child's future. So screen it like you mean it. Type 1 starts long before there are symptoms, but one blood test could help you spot it early, before they need insulin, and could lower the risk of serious complications like diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA. Talk to your doctor about how to screen for type 1 diabetes, because the more you know, the more you can do. So don't wait. Tap now or visit screenfortype1.com to learn more. Again, that's screenfortype1.com. Screen it like you mean it. This holiday season, make your journey memorable with Travel Centers of America. Visit our one-stop shop for all your holiday travel needs. Fuel up, get snacks, and dine at one of our full-service restaurants. Hit the road with peace of mind knowing we've got you covered. Travel Centers of America. Some companies are big, others are small. To Robert Half, their hiring needs are equally huge. At Robert Half, our specialized recruiting professionals elevate their expertise with proprietary AI tools to transform candidate discovery, assessment, and selection. Whether sourcing talent locally or in any geography that works for you, Robert Half can pinpoint hard-to-find candidates in finance and accounting, technology, marketing and creative, legal, and administrative and customer support. At Robert Half, we know talent. Transit is better with an Orca card. Here's why. One, it's easy. Just tap and pay your way onto Metro and all other public transit around the sound. Two, your tap shows us when and where you're riding the most, so Metro can serve you better. And three, Orca cards are for everyone. 18 and younger now ride free with a free youth Orca card. So what are you waiting for? Get an Orca card, tap for transit, and make your ride count today. Visit kingcounty.gov forward slash tap for transit. 
Dealing with an accident and injury claim can be overwhelming. Let Phillips Law Firm fight for you. We understand the pain and suffering, and we're here to guide you through. Call 1-800-JUSTICE today for a free case review or visit justiceforyou.com and let Phillips Law Firm help you on the road to recovery. Looking to give the gift of pleasure? Add a little high heat to keep the desire burning. Or maybe you just need a little self-care. Come to Lovers for the best lingerie and toys to keep things hot this holiday. Save 20% on your purchase with Lovers Afterglow Rewards. Just mention Love 20 at one of our 18 Western Washington locations. Offer valid with free Lovers Afterglow Rewards membership until November 30th. Some exclusions apply. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choose the right chapter.com 99.9 KISW The Rock of Seattle on Friday November 17th at 7pm Live Day goes to prom night be with us man because we have set it up on a Friday night for you where we're doing Live Day but we're doing it at night at Snoqualmie Casino and we're all going to be there live having a blast the music will be done live that's always a great time to hear how the, 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 the local bands and the local musicians are interpreting these songs that we know and love sound effects are live of course we're going to be live the men's room will be there live and probably not sober <laughs> yeah I might not be, you know, you know, I might have a couple myself. Ooh. Yeah, you know me, it doesn't take much. Like one drink and I'm trash. Dare we do a party bus? Yeah. Oh. Whoa. I mean, I know a guy. Whoa. I got my homie Levi and Lion Pride party buses and, and Rich. You know, Richard's always up for a good time. It's a short ride for us, at least from my house anyway, so that's not a problem. It's a long ride from my house, but I'm not driving, so as long yeah. as there's booze in there, I'm okay with it. So by the time you get to my house, you, you guys will probably be trashed, and I'll be like, okay. So we'll have to do a pre-funk. Sarah will probably get that done. I've taken party buses to Portland, Spokane, and every time I'm like, I can't believe we're here already. Like, that was five hours. I'm like, I am I'm, I was just drinking all the time. I didn't care. Now, be careful, because this it's prom night this time. So at Live Day, we're asking you to get dressed up, because we're going to have a prom king and a prom queen. So, uh, Steve, granted you're wearing your tracksuit, but, you know, you don't, you don't want to spill everything all over it, and I'll be sloppy. I got my Adidas wannabe Crocs in the mail yesterday. Oh, yes! You have to match my tracksuit for my prom attire. I love this. This is going to be fantastic. They are the ugliest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, so you you thought they looked good on the screen. As good enough. At, but really, in person, you're like, oh, my God, my wife was right. Why did I do this? They are, if a clown decided to wear Adidas, these are clown shoes. And I am committed to the bit, so I will be wearing them. I am very excited to see They these. are comfortable, though, I have to say. Well, that's what they say about those croc-like shoes. Yeah, I guess they're not doing it for the fashion part. So again, Live Day goes to prom night, Friday, uh, November 17th at 7 p.m. And uh, you want those tickets, join us. It's going to be awesome. Tickets are available at snocasino.com. Let's play Beat Mix. It's time to play the game. So everybody scream his name. Beat Mix. Don't be a loser. ready to be mixed. I know Kristen from Bremerton is. Kristen, are you there? Yes, I am. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. What's up, Kristen? All right, Steve, now get out. Goodbye. For those playing at home, Kristen has 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. You can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Let's do it. The Hart Memorial Trophy is awarded annually to the most valuable player in what sport? Basketball. No. Soccer. No. Football. No. Oh, Kristen. What chef is known for saying Flavor Town? Say that again. What chef is known for saying Flavor Town? Oh, uh, pass. The proboscis monkey is known for having a really long what? Tail. No. <laughs> Nose. Yes. Who was the first female rapper to be inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Ooh. Uh, Queen Latifah. No. Uh, 
<laughs> Typically, what kind of cheese is used in making a tiramisu? Mozzarella? No. Cheese? No. Yeah, it is a cheese, though. She, she is looking for a cheese, yes. Oh, Kristen. Oh, Kristen. Did she drop? No, you, no. She's no. number one today. Woo, you're number one. You got one, one correct, you're Kristen. You're number one, Kristen. You did it for the team. I'm number one. Yeah, yes. boy. Okay. I'll tell you right now, Steve, don't even try. Don't even try. Don't even try, pal. She's got this. Oh, my God. The Ooh. best performance ever. I'm smelling something serious in here. Oh, that's some sarcasm I think I'm smelling. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're talking about Kristen's an all-star. Steve, are you ready? Yes! The Hart Memorial Trophy is awarded annually to the most valuable player uh, in what sport? Hockey. Yes. Uh, what chef is known for saying Flavor Town? Oh, that's uh, our boy uh, Guy Fieri. Yes. The proboscis monkey is known for having a really long what? <laughs> Tail. No. Oh. Uh, dong? No. <laughs> Fingers? No. Who was Nose? the first female? Yes. yes. Who was the first female rapper to be inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I'm going to go Missy Elliott. Yes. Nice work. Typically, what kind of cheese is used in making a tiramisu? Fermunda? No. Uh, cream? No. Mm, yes. The Pink Ladies is a girl group from <laughs> what musical? The Pink Ladies from Greece. Yes. And Greece too. Everywhere You Look was the theme song for what 90s sitcom? Everywhere You Look. Full House? Yes. What country makes the most maple syrup? Which country? Yes. The United States of America? No. Canada? Yes. What is the real first name of rapper Macklemore? Ben. Yes. What sea creature are calamari rings made out of? Um, uh, 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 squid. Yes. And Steve, you get nine correct. Yeah. Almost ten with the nose. Yeah. But that is a big win, nine to one. Oh, sorry, Kristen. You got oh, spanked. My goodness. Which some people enjoy, but... That's it, okay. Yeah. Oh. Right. Hey, good I'll game, donate Kristen. my one. I'll donate, I'll donate my one to him so you can have a perfect ten. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Thanks, All Kristen. Win, win, win. Wow. You try again, Kristen. I know I'll you can do it. better. I believe in her. That's the only one she got right. Yeah. Is it Ben Haggerty? Yes. I mean, his, For Macklemore? his is, real first name is Benjamin. Yeah, that's oh, so. Well, we have not. Ben. We have. It's interesting because when we, we've not taken Chris when it was Christopher. It's it, it goes back and forth on what you will take for a name. But I'm, he I named give it his to you. last record Ben after the mouse. <laughs> after the rat. <laughs> I remember wish. your favorite rat. Yeah. Yeah. DJ, I wish you would remake that song. Would that would be the greatest that. Macklemore song of all time. That would be cool if he did a cover of Ben, the old Michael yeah. Jackson tune. His name is Ben. I mean, his real first name is Benjamin, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. Same with the typically what kind of cheese is used in making tiramisu. It's not ricotta? No, I was looking for mascarpone. Mascarpone is what I would have said too. But mascarpone, I guess, is, is the Italian it, cream yeah. cheese. Oh, it I is looked cream it up. Cheese? It is a cream cheese. Yes. I don't know. Oh, that. nice guess. Steve. So when you said cream, I was like, oh, that wasn't really what I was looking for. Same we with had, Ben. Uh, but I, I had a I had a very bizarre tiramisu yesterday uh, at uh, Vivian's Chinese Bistro on Mercer Island. It's made with Earl Grey tea and not rum. And it was quite quite good. I was very surprised. Go wait, tiramisu with tea? All right, let me try that out and see what's up. Was it better or worse without the rum? Well, which one would you prefer? Because I'm like, why would you take the rum out? Yeah, I know. I mean, but the rum isn't like uh, it's tough. You know, sometimes depending on the tiramisu I have normally, traditionally, I'm, if they put too much rum, I'm like, ah, it was a little too much. I would I would have liked less. This grew on me. This tea flavored Earl Grey tea flavored tiramisu actually grew on me, and I think I would like to have that more. I don't remember the last time I had tiramisu. Yeah, me either. And I think did you inc know that there's like a connection between tiramisu and a, a lyric from one of uh, Macklemore's songs? No, I didn't. That's hilarious. Oh wow! Called downtown, where he goes, he's like, "There's layers to this player, like tiramisu." Oh, yeah. <laughs> I oh, do know that song. That's very cool. Yeah. Wow, look at me. I didn't even mean to do that. I was like, oh, that. I wonder if that was the rabbit hole you went down. And all of a sudden, that, you know, you never know how you come right? up with these questions. The so. accidental rabbit hole. Yeah. You gotta love them. Oh, man. Yeah. Tiramisu. Isn't that like, it's like green and red? Like what? What, no, tiramisu? Not at all. No, it's brownish. It's like, it's got a brownish. It's and brown and white. I thought it had all the white. layers of different colors, like a rainbow. No, you're thinking of something different. What the hell am I thiramisu. thinking of? A parfait? 
I don't know what this word is that you're saying. <laughs> lady fing- it's got lady fingers, so it's very spongy, the one that we're talking about. It's got this rum in tiramisu. it. It's very Italiano. That's tiramisu? Yes. What the hell kind of Italian are you? Right? You're the worst Italian I've ever met. I, I mean, I'm not even Italian ever since I got my DNA done. Yeah, I don't know what you're thinking. That looks delicious, whatever Yeah, that I is. thought it was like a thing that had like multiple colors, it's like, like a, a ne- rainbow looking that, thing. That looks like a Neapolitan cake, kind of. You know this thing? Have you ever seen that? Yeah, that's delicious. I do. Yeah, yeah. I've always thought that was tiramisu. No. Yeah, that's it's good. It's called the t- Italian rainbow cake, apparently. Yeah. Or Italian rainbow cookies. Boom. Yes. See, I'm a good Italian. I know my rainbows in Italy. Yeah. That's good. And that instead of having chocolate as the Neapolitan, it looks like it's a mint. I so thought that was tiramisu all these years. No, <laughs> sir. So you've never had tiramisu, I bet. Apparently not. Oh, you got to try it out, dude. You have to. That's like the, the well, Italian. I kind of are... want the other version. My version. Oh, yeah, so Costco, version. Costco sells the tiramisu cups and these little glass cups, and they are so damn addicting. I was able to make a plethora of candles out of these stupid little cups because I ate so many of them yeah, last Vicky, year. We had to, we had to pull so Vicky good. away from that. It was bad. <sighs> Yeah, Vicky had to go to a support group. Yep, a little bit. I think the version I'm into it sounds cooler. You haven't tried the other one, so how could you know? That's a very good point. Yeah, but I'm not saying the one you the one you like is is also good too. I mean, it's it looks good. All right, here if you've uh, if you've got some problems, okay, man, I don't care. If I do related. about this tiramisu. Yeah, yeah you do. If you don't know what the hell tiramisu is, maybe you've got relationship issues. Maybe you're married to somebody that's not a good Italian. I don't care what the issue is. We are here for you. Call us or text us right now at 206-803-ROCK. It's Help Wanted, and we're going to do that at 717 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. We all know cats are intelligent. Felix Cat Insurance was able to secretly record two cats on a hidden microphone. Let's listen in. Did you hear the one about the three dogs at the park? That's old, like four lives ago. But did you hear about the new pet insurance just for cats from FelixCatInsurance.com? Of course. What do I look like, a dog? When you're coughing up a furball. Yes. Listen, Felix Cat Insurance plans start at under $1 per day and are as unique as you and me. They call it whisker to tail protection. <laughs> Even furballs? Even that. Remember the last time you had a furball? I made a TikTok. It went viral. <laughs> oh, that's good. Wait, you're on social media? There you have it. Felix Cat Insurance. Customizable coverage exclusively for felines. Sorry, no dogs allowed. FelixCatInsurance.com. Get it? Meow. Insurance is underwritten by Independence American Insurance Company and produced by Independence Pet Group. Pre-existing conditions are not covered. For all terms and limitations, visit FelixCatInsurance.com slash terms. <laughs> Is your relationship going sideways? Have a family issue? Problems with your co-worker? Do you need advice? We're here to help. No problem is too dumb. No dilemma is too silly. This is Help Wanted with BJ and Migs. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. All right, Help Wanted, man. We've been getting so many texts and messages and phone calls from Rockaholics looking for our advice that we were like, wow, listeners on the loose just isn't enough. So we created this segment so if you got relationship issues, problems at work, or anything else, and it does not matter how dumb you think it is, we're experts on dumb, we are here for you. Call us or text us at 206-803-ROCK. It's help wanted. Uh, someone just texted this one in actually four minutes ago. So hot off the presses, Woo, BJ. Hot off the so presses, I it'd be baby. a fun one. I, I'm, I have a feeling I know what you're going to say, but I'd like to hear your opinion on this one. Yeah, all right. I might not say anything. You know me. You know what? Sometimes we think we know what you're about to say. We think we know the answers, and it sounds like you changed the question. Yeah, you're probably right, though. Yeah, you're probably... When it comes to these kind of things, you guys know me. All right. This one said, help wanted. It's kind of silly, but my parents think my wardrobe is immature. Keep in mind, I'm married, I'm 32, and we have two kids. My mom doesn't like the fact that I still wear graphic t-shirts and band shirts whenever they go Whenever they go to garage sales. They will buy me button-up shirts or polos and say, here, this will be better for your wardrobe. I tell them that I could give it to my brother-in-law because, well, I wouldn't be caught dead wearing a picnic tablecloth. Yeah. I'm not a business guy. I'm a blue-collar worker, and I like to have fun with what I wear. Is there anything I can do to get them to understand that I don't care about looking like a 60-year-old businessman? Yeah, I you know I I again with parents. What is what 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 are you doing? Your kid's got a job. He's got kids. He seems to be in a good marriage. Who cares what he's wearing, especially when his job doesn't care? Yeah, dude, your parents just they're, they're just clueless. They don't get it. And also, if they're trying to improve your your wardrobe, 
How about buying some new clothes? Like, it seems weird that he's they're going to a garage sale. <laughs> You're right. And they're finding, like, somebody's secondhand yeah. stuff. And, like, here, we don't like your band. We don't like that Metallica shirt. Here's some, like, old polo shirt that we got at a garage well, sale down the street. I will agree with you. However, if they know he's not going to wear it, why are you going to go spend money on new clothes? Like, at that point, just try to get him into it. And oh, then okay. if, he, if he likes it, then you go spend the actual money. I don't know. I know he's not going to wear it. I'm not going to spend money on a garage sale, even if it's 50 cents. That's fair. I wonder who's doing this. That's the thing is, is that. Right, mom. Yeah. And dad, and this is, look, I'm not an expert on marriage. You know, that's for you sure. You aren't? No. But this is where I would tell my wife, just leave it alone. Let, let him it. be who he is. But a lot of husbands, you know, or sp- I shouldn't say husbands. There's always that one spouse that's just really super active in people's business. And the other spouse is like, ah, you know what? I don't want to fight with you. I, I spend all my life fighting with you. Sure, go ahead. Do what you want. I'll let the kid have to deal with See, it. I was curious if you're going to go down that he needs to be in his lane kind of a thing. Well, he is, <laughs> but he is in his lane. He says he's a blue collar worker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is his lane. If he were a businessman, like if you'd say if he was a salesperson interacting with folks that like the golf crowd, the the golf course crowd then i'd be like dude you know if you want to get ahead you do have to dress for the part but if he's a blue collar dude that's his uniform that's his outfit and good for him hell yeah i mean look what i'm wearing today i wish i could wear this every day you can if you want you to really uh, yeah but i feel like you know i i really feel like i gotta wear like a button-down shirt and have you know i just feel like i gotta look a little better because i was for told us just for the business, you know, because oh. you, you never I know. I always thought you were going to like a fancy lunch afterwards whenever you put the button up. Yeah. Shirt. Yeah. Especially since nobody else is in the building right now. I'm ever. Bit, here's just what. us. <laughs> here's what. Dude down the security guard. He wants to make sure he looks good for the security sure. guard. Yeah. yeah. That security guard, man. Let me tell you, I want them to know that I'm all business. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I'm wearing this today because, of course, it's Kraken Thursday. So I'm like, all right, I can I can wear this T-shirt today because it's for the Seattle Kraken. Everybody will understand. But otherwise, I do wear the button down because, you know, I mean, it's in case you run into a client or in case you run into somebody. You just, you know, I, I've always been told to, like, try to look your best for whatever, you know, like your best rock look. And that's kind of like the best rock look is to have a cool button down shirt as opposed to a T-shirt. Oh, yeah. Whenever I see Metallica rock out on stage, they're wearing button ups. That's their gig, though. Like, that's <laughs> what they look like. You know what I mean? They, they, you have to take Metallica of who they are. You know, you really do. They got to stay in their lane. Yeah. BJ would have lost his mind on me uh, when we went to Portland this past weekend because we also had a meeting with a client for our big morning show convention that we do every year. We went to go check out a hotel because Portland was one of the cities. And I showed up where Are we my, doing a convention at the Acropolis? I, because that yes. might be the most wait, brilliant wait, 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 thing. I wish we could have. Okay. They, you guys were... The, our convention was considering Portland over Seattle? 100%. Oh, I hate our people that are at these conventions. Seattle's so much better. I'd much rather have our convention in Portland than Seattle. Well, I know. Yeah, I'm with you. Yes. It's good to not be in your home city. But I'm also proud enough to go, F Portland. You know what? Seattle's a much cooler city. So we showed up wearing... I wore, wore shorts, mismatched shoes, my concert shoes that were dirty and a emo night shirt with a hat on and I, the only reason i know bj would have lost his mind is we're meeting with like this like high muckety muck at one of the hotels and his son joey was with me and was losing his mind on me being like why are you wearing that and then also our other person that works with us marie she was wearing a mushroom t-shirt and ripped jeans and joe's like we're meeting with like a hotel person and we're like yeah. Yeah, but they want your business. It was the funniest part. The okay. hotel person was like, you guys are radio people. You guys don't have to dress up for us. So to your point, it's funny to me that like they, they thought of us like, oh, no, this is what you guys wear all the time. Yeah, and I like to uh, I like to over deliver. So that if that's what they would expect so us to look like, yeah, I want to show up with a tuxedo. But I've already, I've given up on you, Danny. I don't. I, I think. Oh, yeah, I've given up. You're going to just be who you're going to be. Yeah, um, this guy just needs to tell his parents to leave him the f alone. Yeah, leave. Yeah. Just do what you want. Wear yeah. the wallet chain. I mean, he's he's already got a life. I hit that. I had that point with my parents where at one point they actually just point my mom. I don't know if she had a couple too many Jack Daniels or what, but she just was like, "When are you going to grow up?" Oh, I hate that line. And I was just oh, like, I hate hate that line. Oh, I looked at my wife. She kind of did the, like, almost like Pete Carroll on the sidelines when Gino was having his meltdown. And he did, like, the rub the Buddha belly. He's like, calm down, Gino. My wife's looking at me like, let it go, you know. Because my mom's a really loving and awesome person. You all met. You know, she's great. But every once in a while, she'll just say something unfiltered and I'm just like, that was a dagger. And then I finally, I'm like, I haven't needed your guys' help 
since I was 18. I've been independent of you all since I was eight. I figured out ways to get through college. Yeah, you know, when my dad lost his job, I found ways to be able to pay off my college through scholarships and being an RA, doing all this. I've, I've lived on my own. I've, I have a home. All this stuff. I pay my bills on time. I've grown up, but I still do immature S. Yes, of course I do. But that's because that helps me stay sane. Because of you, at no, I almost said something. <laughs> it's getting a little fired up there. But I'm I was so, so pissed off because I was like, "Who are you going to tell me to grow up? What is growing up? I think I've done everything that is quote unquote grown up." Minus like, okay, yes, I do silly stuff like play hockey and wrestle and wear maybe like clothes aren't suits, but I've done the grown up part. I feel well. Here's the thing, you know, and this is something to really keep track of, and and also for the texter. And again, the, the years of therapy will be helpful when parents like your parents say stuff like that, Steve, and when parents are bothering kids, really what they're looking at is how is it you get to have fun and you're still able to have an adult life? Yeah. And they're jealous and they don't know how to they don't know how to face that. So instead, they try to make you feel badly for basically having it all. You're you're in a responsible adult. You've got a life. You've got a job. You got a family, got the house, got the kid, got everything that they had. Yet you look like you're still having fun and you haven't lost that childlike exuberance that they obviously feel like they lost. I had to stop because I, mean, I got off the phone. I was like, now, of course, my, my wife's just like, OK, now you can say everything. I'm like. These mother blankets yeah. think growing up and living a good life is coming home from work, sitting on their, on their couch for like five, six hours and watching boring, depressing news stories. <laughs> and that's growing up to them. I'm sorry I'm not doing it. I was like losing my crap. <laughs> I was like, how is that growing up? You're a better man than me because I would have said something. I, I said enough. And honestly, props to my mom. Now she even asks about those things in a more of a curious way. Like, oh, tell me, are you playing hockey? Are you doing this? It used to be that was a, a sore subject with them. Now they're actually asking questions like they kind of give a crap. Yeah, man. It's it, it, that generation, you know, it's tough for them to really reconcile what they're feeling. They only know how to basically blame others. It's and it's not, you know, it's that generation. That's what they were taught. They were taught, you know, you work hard and you don't have fun because that's what they were told by, well, the system that basically then exploited the hell out of them for their riches and their fun while they're working class, you know, just doing the best. It's so ridiculous. But your generation figured it out. You're like, yeah, I'm going to have fun. I am not going to, you know, be old and stodgy. And then Danny's generation, obviously, look at him. He doesn't care. No. Zero F's given. It, it really is. It's, it's total zero F's given. They do not care. So, uh, so I said, hey, yeah. should, they were up a good point. I, I can't believe they're wasting all their energy trying to buy you polo shirts at all these garage sales. They could probably find some cool rock shirts that are there, too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, dude, live your life. Understand they're jealous. That's really what's going on. And understand that one of your parents should tell the other one to shut up. If they're both in on this, that's ridiculous. Though I think one is just pretending to be in on it so that they can not fight with the other. But you know me, if it were me, I'd be like, leave the kid alone. Let him do whatever he wants to do. He's got the gig that he's got. What is he going to do? Even the texture said, nah, as a grown man, you can wear whatever you want. Yeah, I still believe that depending upon what you're trying to do in life, you stay in your own lane. But that depends. Yes, on what, it came out. Yeah, I'm hoping. I but, win the bet. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> it depends on what you're trying to do in life. Because sometimes you just don't want to look like a tryhard you don't want to look like an idiot and me anyway that's for me i want to look appropriate whatever that means for me and uh sometimes you know that's why i can't wait to see danny in 20 years will he still be rocking this look or will yes. he evolve it um i would hope he evolves it because look at duff mckagan duff mckagan i think is a great dresser I always love that you bring him up. I and do. Then we he find, does. He and then we find exact, pictures of him wearing like tight black tank tops. Exact same thing he was wearing every time. Yeah, but but ago. hold on. Duff also wears good dress up stuff. He wears some cool button down shirts. It's like when you see him go into some sort of an award show or something with his wife, they both look rock and roll magnificent. You know, and well, and Danny's also, not getting invited to these award shows. I'm sure if he goes <laughs> I mean, to an award show, he'll put on a nice vest Duff, with no sleeves, like yeah, Duff McKay. Not at all. I, Danny, I've never seen Danny dress up for anything except wearing that oh, that gold jacket he and Joey D's bought for. That's one dressing of up. Yeah. yeah. How about the disco ball yeah. suit that yeah. I bought for your daughter's wedding? See, Duff, you know, Duff. Well, first of all, Duff's got a good physique, so he can always wear a tank He's top. He's wearing a tank top. He's yeah. wearing a vest with nothing underneath yeah. of it, like He's, a leather vest. Yeah. Danny, you need more leather vests and there nothing right underneath. That's a good look for Duff. You know, there it is. It's a, it's a leather vest with a cut-off sleeve well, he, t-shirt. He's performing there. I'm just saying okay. like he's, he's just running performing. Around. Yeah, Danny's performing. He's performing right. in Portland doing, I don't know what, but yeah. he was performing. Yeah, yeah. Alright, we're going to see what Danny... 
He's I'm pretty sure this is like not today, it. Satan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not today, Satan. That's I mean, a great shirt. it's an interesting person that you keep going back to as like your example because My yes, favorite. I think Duff looks cool, but he looks like a rock star. He's not. He's not wearing a button-up shirt. He's not wearing. Oh, you haven't seen him in the when he wears those. But yeah, you got to find. It those looks pictures. like he's wearing a tank top underneath his button-up. Like uh, he's wearing a blazer with a tank top yeah. underneath. And then I've seen like, Danny wear a sports coat. Yeah, yeah Danny. That's can, what Danny wears. Danny would, Danny would never wear something looking that cool. And I think his wife's wearing basically like Danny's disco ball shirt Jeez, or uh, look, dress uh, version. Uh, don't tell. Don't tell Duff. But his wife. That's a great dress for her. That that's fantastic. Totally. It's a weird obsession with how Duff dresses. See, I remember. I just remember every time I saw Duff when he would come in, we'd hang out. I'm like, God, that guy really. He knows how to do what he knows how to. He do. just has a crush on Duff. He doesn't have a crush on me. So and that's I'm not, the difference. And I'm not here to tell like I I like how Duff looks and dresses, but I think it's hilarious that you're making it seem like Duff's like doing like this massive dress up thing. When I'm looking even through his Instagram and everything is a leather vest with no sleeves underneath of it or shirts yeah. with, and we yeah, have this conversation seem, every time. Yeah, he does. So he does do like that. He likes to do that tank top thing. Yeah. Yeah. He you does. should do that, BJ. You yeah. should start coming to work wearing a leather vest oh, please. and a tank top. Yeah. Please do it. Right there. That's a good look. He's wearing track pants. Oh, see, track pants are good. Okay, right there. Yes, he's got a button-up shirt. That's there. Button- it is. See, the the, the the buttons are buttoned down to like his navel. <laughs> well, he uh, he does have that look. Yeah. I don't think I would go that far, but then he's got a Why better not? physique. It's than a me. button shirt. I know he's just got a better physique. From me. If just, I if I button down like that, you're just going to be like, what the hell? Just button? stop before the stomach, and you're yeah. good. <laughs> my stomach starts at my nipples. You know, I mean, seriously, I, I can't. Ah, Duff McKagan, you'll never be a Duff McKagan, Danny. There we go. I didn't so know do, he was trying. Do we help anybody with that? Yeah, uh, wherever the hell you want. Tell your parents to shut up. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> hey, speaking of music, man, there's a popular musical artist who apologized for getting primal after he threatened to beat up one of his fans. Why did he do this? Oh, you're going to hear what happened. I'll tell you all about it at 750 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's another listener question. How do I rebuild my credit after filing bankruptcy? Uh, you rebuild it, you know, one creditor at a time by making your payments on time to, on your on your rent or your mortgage, by continuing to make car payments at, on a car that you keep during your case. Um, you can also, as I said, or, uh, you can almost always get a credit card almost immediately after filing bankruptcy. Sometimes it's a secured card and it'll almost always have a really high interest rate on it, but you could get a small balance credit card and you know, charge a tank of gas or, or a dinner once a month on that and make the payment, pay it off every month, and that'll help you build a credit history one creditor at a time and will help you rebuild your credit over time. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. This holiday season, make your journey memorable with Travel Centers of America, where our motto is simple. Return every traveler to the road better than they came. Avoid any hassle and stop at our one-stop shop for all your holiday travel needs. Fuel up, indulge in delicious snacks, and dine at one of our full-service restaurants. Hit the road with peace of mind knowing we've got you covered. For more info, go to ta-petro.com. Travel Centers of America, your road to happy travels. From the very beginning, your kids mean everything to you. That means you do anything for them, especially if they're at risk. So when it comes to type 1 diabetes, screen it like you mean it. Because even if just one person in the family has it, your child is up to 15 times more likely to get it too. Screen it like you mean it. Because type 1 diabetes can develop at any age. And once you get results, you can get prepared for your child's future. So screen it like you mean it. Type 1 starts long before there are symptoms, but one blood test could help you spot it early, before they need insulin, and could lower the risk of serious complications like diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA. Talk to your doctor about how to screen for type 1 diabetes, because the more you know, the more you can do. So don't wait. Tap now or visit screenfortype1.com to learn more. Again, that's screenfortype1.com. Screen it like you mean it. Some companies are big, others are small. To Robert Half, their hiring needs are equally huge. At Robert Half, our specialized recruiting professionals elevate their expertise with proprietary AI tools to transform candidate discovery, assessment, and selection. 
Whether sourcing talent locally or in any geography that works for you, Robert Half can pinpoint hard-to-find candidates in finance and accounting, technology, marketing and creative, legal and administrative and customer support. At Robert Half, we know talent. Transit is better with an Orca card. Here's why. One, it's easy. Just tap and pay your way onto Metro and all other public transit around the sound. Two, your tap shows us when and where you're riding the most, so Metro can serve you better. And three, Orca cards are for everyone. 18 and younger now ride free with a free youth Orca card. So what are you waiting for? Get an Orca card, tap for transit, and make your ride count today. Visit kingcounty.gov forward slash tap for transit. Have you or a loved one been injured in an accident? Are you struggling to recover fair compensation? Look no further. At Phillips Law Firm, the experienced personal injury attorneys will fight for your rights and get you the justice and compensation you deserve. They handle a wide range of cases, including car accidents, slip and falls, medical malpractice, and workplace injuries. Justice is a phone call away, so don't wait. Call today for a free case review. Call 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Looking to give the gift of pleasure? Add a little high heat to keep the desire burning. Or maybe you just need a little self-care. Come to Lovers for the best lingerie and toys to keep things hot this holiday. Save 20% on your purchase with Lovers Afterglow Rewards. Just mention Love 20 at one of our 18 Western Washington locations. Offer valid with free Lovers Afterglow Rewards membership until November 30th. Some exclusions apply. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's Choose the Right chapter.com. 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. Well, Steve, Danny's favorite guy, Machine Gun Kelly's in the news. Yes. Yeah, he loves him. He should. Yeah. Come on, Danny. Machine he Gun does, Kelly. Is, he does pop punk music. He's or, everything you want to be. He hung and played music with Travis Barker from Blink 182. Yeah. He's with Megan Fox. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. I'm just jealous. He did a duet, I think. Uh, did a duet uh, with Avril Lavigne on her latest album. That he was has, a really uh, good one. He has beautiful blonde hair. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, man, you're jealous of him. I am. It's fine. Man, you always find a way to bring back Avril Lavigne, don't you? No, well, well dude, I mean, Machine Gun Kelly, you know, if he wants to be a star, he's got to perform with the stars. Okay. Yeah, you know, that's what it's got to be. Uh, yeah, that's where words have been yeah. spoken, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and don't forget, because that, that's what they sang, the great song, Boys Lie, and that would be B-O-I-S, lie. Okay, that's the, uh, that's the latest from... Yep. Hey, uh, MGK was being interviewed on stage at the Forbes Under 30 Summit in Cleveland when an aggressive fan dashed on stage and confronted him. Have you seen the video of this? No, I haven't. I, but it's, it's crazy. He's just doing an interview, and all of a sudden, Machine Gun Kelly pops out of the chair because this random... And the dude, the guy looked kind of harmless, but you just never know. He looked kind of like a dorky dude. Yeah. But Machine Gun Kelly just pops up. His fists are clenched like he's going to wreck this dude. But the best part is the outfit that Machine Gun Kelly is in is not very intimidating. It's, like these, <laughs> it's almost like he's wearing like these... like. Business pantsuits for women. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. know how else to describe it. You know, the wide I mean? like leg. The wide leg ones mm -hmm. that almost like when your legs are together, it looks like a long dress. Sure. Yeah, almost like he's got a kimono on or something. Yeah, yeah. it just doesn't look like he's like ready to fight. But man, he was he popped up and he was going to, I almost wish I could have seen what would happen. Yeah. Uh, and and so if you haven't seen this, check out the video on the BJ and Migs page of KISW.com. Over serving, over consumption, quick, as long as it gets to, you know. So that that's the same thing with the 27 Club. That's like, um, my uh, man, get hey. away from me. I got you, man. Yo, what are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing? This is a bad look. Don't make me do this. Don't, don't make me do this. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me do it. Don't make me wreck you, bro. Wow. Just seeing how aggressive Machine Gun Kelly was and how dorky the other guy was looks like every superhero evil villain origin story. Like, that is the moment he cracks and somehow he's going to get superpowers in the next few days, so keep an eye on him. Don't make me do this, bro. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to show him, I say. I'm going to let a spider bite me. This man was led away by security. I mean, he was bear hugged by security and pulled off the stage.
But it was also, I mean, I don't know if you were listening to what he was saying beforehand. It sounded like they were talking about the 27 club, yeah. which is about like all the artists that have died at the age of 27. So it's kind of like a, a heavy subject. And all of a sudden you're talking about death and some random dude just jumps up on stage and maybe like, that's not how you ask questions, man. You go to the podium. You tell like the Dude, moderator people, I have a question. Something has happened, and I don't know what it is, but it started with movie theaters and people just thinking like there are no boundaries. I could do what I want, go what I want, say what I want, and you know I'll be on my phone. I can put my foot up on somebody else's chair, and it's just that it's eroded this idea that you're the uh, you're the customer, you're the viewer, you're the watcher, and they're the entertainment. And the barrier is you don't go where they're entertaining you, and you be quiet and like enjoy the show instead this guy thought oh there's machine gun kelly i can go up on stage and talk to him right i, I have a lanyard i should be able to go up there man i know like if we live in such a, like, a litigious world now but it almost makes you think of the old days of, like when a streaker would jump on the field a football player is going to wreck you that was like the the ultimate f around and find out moment yeah and i almost thought that that guy was going to learn a valuable lesson machine gun kelly popped up and i mean I know some people would be like, that's awful what he did. But if he just straight up punched the dude, I'd be like, well, dude learned a lesson, I hope. What do you expect him to do? He doesn't know what that dude's going to do getting on stage. And he's got to, you know, he's, he's, he's fearing for his life. I don't blame Machine Gun Kelly at all. Actually, I was kind of like, okay, maybe you can calm down a little bit, but not so much now. Because apparently about a month or two ago, there was a guy who was a shooter and actually did some horrible things. And they found his hit list and he was on it. And GK Kelly. was on it? Yeah, Machine Gun Ooh. Kelly and Eminem were also on this list of possible like oh, so victims. I, so I, I don't blame him for being little, on edge. He's a little on edge. Little yeah, bit. well, if, yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're on somebody's hit list, yeah, you're not going to... It makes sense. And he did apologize. And, and Machine Gun Kelly said, look, I am so sorry for my primal reaction. But after that news that Vicky just told us, I, you can't blame him. I, I'm like, dude, should have hit him. <laughs> I'd be a terrible interviewer. Like, no, dude, let's go get him. Let's bring him back out. Punch him. No, like, push. Dude, I fell down, like, yeah. I fell down that rabbit hole sometimes where it's like when fans get go, like the F around and find out things, especially in the world of wrestling. It's back in the day when people believed it more what was going on and some fans would try and slide into the ring and you can spend hours watching fans thinking, okay, this is my chance to get in the ring and typically they get wrecked by those dudes. Like the, the old school wrestlers are just waiting for that opportunity. There's a great one of Triple H and, and Stone Cold Steve Austin are having a match and some random dude just walks in trying to touch Steve Austin and Triple H just wrecks him. And it's like, he's just on top of the guy beating wow. him up. And I'm like, yeah, I understand that that's not how we want to live our world. But <laughs> on the flip side, I don't think that guy's ever going to try that again. Oh, and even the ref is getting The ref's it. kicking him, too. Yeah, it's that's amazing. that's fantastic. And now, you know, I'm wondering. And then other guys are coming in. All these old school dudes are like, oh, now I have a chance to beat up on this guy. It's oh, insane, that's, dude. Yeah, dude, that's insane. Yeah, get that idiot out of there. <laughs> oh, H keeps rocking Oh, him. he just smacks him. He just gives him another one. Wow. And the funny part is, like, you hear, like, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin be interviewed about it. He talks about how much he appreciated Triple H doing that because Stone Cold was a good guy. And a good guy shouldn't be beating up a fan. Yeah. But Triple H was a bad guy, so it's okay in the eye. You know, it's funny how they're still thinking in their characters. Yeah, really? Like, so he's like, I really appreciated it. So I didn't look like a bad guy doing that. But Triple H just wrecked that, it. You got to post that video, Vicky, because that video of Triple H just, I mean, the whole gang, that is epic. <laughs> and you're right. The ref is the best part. The guy is supposed <laughs> to keep order. He's just kind of, like, just kicking the guy. I'm like, kicking the dude. Off, dude. I mean, and hey, you're the winner, Triple H. You won against that dude that came in the ring. He just basically raised his arm in the air and gave him the belt. Oh, but man, you can just ah. you, you, you can go down that rabbit hole of just all the fans oh. jumping into the ring and then one got attacked by a ref. It's oh. just so great because like once you see it, the nice thing is they have that like the re the fans still has to get up there, so you have that moment where you can still like rock them before they even get up on their feet. Yeah, yeah, that's. Gosh, again, alcohol might be the reason. Who knows? But what is what are people thinking? I, I, I don't you, know. You, alcohol. You, You're yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, it's just you don't. You just do not have the. You do not have the right to go up and do stuff like that. And yet they think they do. <laughs> this uh, one is the ref just straight uh, up. Oh, the ref the is the one doing it now. And he just looks like a little dude. The ref. That's fantastic. Yeah. You love it when the ref can just school you. Yeah, if you ever just want to be entertained by like stupidity of people and, and those ultimate f around and find out moments. Damn. It's like the streakers, like we were talking about. Like yeah. when you had that moment, I, I would hope that someone else that's in the in the stadium is thinking that looks like it'd be fun. And then when they see what happens, they're like, "No, that doesn't look like fun." Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to be the get off my lawn kind of guy. But people more and more just feel like when they are out in public at an event that's like an entertainment event, they're like, "I'm in my living room." 
No, you're not. Will you put your phone away? Stop talking. Stop being idiots. Let us watch the movie. It's just more and more. It's like, God, are you kidding me? And, you know, folks with their phone having these conversations and it's blasting and they're yelling just in a public place. Right. And you're just like, dude, geez, put on some earbuds. Why can't you figure this out? We all just need a random wrestling referee to just show up and like take the guy's phone and throw it against the oh, wall. I would love that so much. Oh, if I, if I knew I had only like a, a couple of months to live. I think I would do that. I think oh, that's, what, that's that's how I would go out. That would be your your swan song. I would go to airports and I would just grab everybody's phones and just throw them through security. Just take them, just take them and throw them. I mean, that would be it. And they go, "What are you gonna do?" I'm stage four. Too bad. I'm doing what I want to do. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's what I think. I people. What? what would you do if you knew you had like people ask that question? If you only knew you had 13 weeks to live or whatever, what would you? What would life be like? And usually they want you to go. Oh, I'd appreciate the, the great things, and I'd go smell nature, and I'd go be kind to people smell nature yeah Ooh. not me i would go out if i only had weeks to live i would take i would go out and i'd yell at everybody in the movie theater that wouldn't shut up i'd take their phones i'd be like a superhero for the the average person i think i would go on a massive drug bender oh, oh yeah wow. <laughs> if i had two weeks to live nothing hardcore like you know like crazy meth or coke or something but i think i just do molly every day oh because wow. i know i'm gonna die so i might as well be in a good mood oh every yeah day. molly's a great way and to just kind of just go for it and just like every day just smiling and hugging people man and smelling nature <laughs> you gotta smell <laughs> nature <laughs> smelling nature is the best way to go when you got two weeks to live just going around <laughs> living life yeah, and loving yeah, people yeah, that's yeah. all you gotta do and smell nature baby ah uh, that's classic stuff uh guys i don't know if you heard this this is weird but I guess not surprising. Uh, Jada Pinkett is out promoting her new memoir, Worthy, and this is. And she says in this memoir that her and Will Smith have been living separate lives since 2016. Now there were rumors of the open marriage and yeah. all this, and now we're finding out that there's a thing. Now I think they call this. I was told by a friend of mine. There's a thing called a Korean divorce, and a okay. Kore- I know a Korean divorce is. Basically what she says they've been doing. You live separate lives. You're not romantically involved anymore. You just don't get a divorce and split up your assets and do all of that. But I guess that's a popular thing in Korea where that's where a lot of couples, if they're, they don't want to get officially divorced, but they both agree they're going to go out and do whatever they want to do. And they're still going to have finances together, but they're going to go be romantically involved with other people. Uh, I had never heard this phrase Korean divorce before, but yeah, that's, it seems like that's what Jada Pinkett's doing. I've never heard that before. Yeah. I know I saw like, I, uh, I saw an interview with her. I was listening to it this morning when she was talking about all this. I was like, you know what? We could just say that she, this is happening. Because I was listening. I'm like, just shut up. I can't. I, it's, like, <laughs> it's just so like, we just decided. It's like one of those people that said, it was in the universe. And then we did it. I'm like, oh, is she doing all that language Whatever. Stuff? It's like, you know, yeah. just, okay. You're not together anymore. We don't need to hear like this overly complicated description of why. So when the Academy Award situation happened and the big slap, they were not together. Right. Like they were in this, if you will, Korean divorce setup. Then why did they go together? That, I guess because yeah. of celebrities and people expect them to be there and he's up and for an Academy Award. They definitely want you to think they're yes. still somewhat together because, yeah, they do have, they, they've done a lot of things. Maybe they're doing it for the kids. Mm-hmm. It's possible. they or, have, Or for de- their celebrity. Yeah, they got tons of money, so it's easy to, I'm sure, figure this out in a way that, you know, other people don't get to. But here's the wild thing, because we talked about this slap. Apparently, Jade reveals one time that Chris Rock once asked her out. So Which, do you think maybe that's maybe a little bit of the beef? I think you may be onto something on that, and that's why it was more about the take your name out of her out of your mouth. Because yeah, there's like a little bit of jealousy, or maybe that was like a sore subject. You, he, that's look, kind of interesting. I, I gotta think that Jada at one point said, "You'll never guess what happened." Hey, Chris Rock asked me out, and she and she did tell Chris, "Hey, I'm still technically married," and he's like, "Oh, I'm real sorry." He was he was very, he profusely apologized. Chris said, "I didn't know," and. Um, and it turns out she didn't think the sla- she thought the slap was a bit. She was like, "I really thought they were doing a skit. I didn't think he really hit him." Um, okay, that's pretty funny. So yeah. she thought, like the rest of us, that this was just something that they kind of choreographed together. Yeah, and- until you realize it wasn't. And then as far as the joke about her hair and Propecia and all that, uh, Jada was like, look, I, I, I'm not going to say it offended me. Uh, she says, look, that's what comedians do. And she said, I'm, I'm not also going to judge somebody how they express themselves and express their art. So she was definitely taking the high road about all of it, whether or not she really means that. I'd rather just hear her say, yeah, it pissed me off. I guess Chris also went to the stage after the slap and tried to apologize to her. He came to the edge of the stage huh. where she was and said, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't, which I... 
you know, I, I've always got that Chris Rock seems like that kind of guy. He's like, look, I'm just doing shtick out here. I'm not trying to be hurtful to anybody. Do you think that on the drive back, if they were driving together to wherever they were going, that like, Jada's just like, this is why we're not together. You can't yeah. control yourself. Yeah. I, I mean, really, I, I would bet that she was like, dude, what the F? Yeah, this is, this is why, you know what, this is why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. Damn, dude. Chris Rock tried to get in there. God, try to get in there. <laughs> try to slide into those DMs, man. Wouldn't that have been amazing if he actually, like, Will Smith brought that part up? Like, and you try to bang my wife. Well. I think people maybe would have been a little bit more sympathetic to Will Smith at that point. I guess it wasn't her name he also wanted him to keep out of her mouth. But, you know, hey. Well, that's just. I'm sorry. Was that too Disrespectful. Soon? Yeah. Hey, there was a, uh, a recent poll that asked people, what's the dumbest thing you've seen someone do at work? <laughs> Please do not mention us. Every day. Yeah, because I feel like there's a lot. Uh, I'll tell you what made the list at 817 on The Rock. BJ and Mix Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. We all know cats are intelligent. Felix Cat Insurance was able to secretly record two cats on a hidden microphone. Let's listen in. Did you hear the one about the three dogs at the park? That's old. Like four lives ago. But did you hear about the new pet insurance just for cats from FelixCatInsurance.com? Of course. What do I look like, a dog? When you're coughing up a furball. Yes. Listen, Felix Cat Insurance plans start at under $1 per day. And are as unique as you and me. They call it whisker-to-tail protection. Even furballs? Even that. Remember the last time you had a furball? I made a TikTok. It went viral. <laughs> oh, that's good. Wait, you're on social media? There you have it. Felix Cat Insurance. Customizable coverage exclusively for felines. Sorry, no dogs allowed. FelixCatInsurance.com. Get it? Meow. Insurance is underwritten by Independence American Insurance Company and produced by Independence Pet Group. Pre-existing conditions are not covered. For all terms and limitations, visit FelixCatInsurance.com slash terms. This holiday season, make your journey memorable with Travel Centers of America. Visit our one-stop shop for all your holiday travel needs. Fuel up, get snacks, and dine at one of our full-service restaurants. Hit the road with peace of mind knowing we've got you covered. Travel Centers of America. From the very beginning, your kids mean everything to you. That means you do anything for them, especially if they're at risk. So when it comes to type 1 diabetes, screen it like you mean it. Because even if just one person in the family has it, your child is up to 15 times more likely to get it, too. Screen it like you mean it. Because type 1 diabetes can develop at any age. And once you get results, you can get prepared for your child's future. So screen it like you mean it. Type 1 starts long before there are symptoms. But one blood test could help you spot it early, before they need insulin, and could lower the risk of serious complications like diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA. Talk to your doctor about how to screen for type 1 diabetes, because the more you know, the more you can do. So don't wait. Tap now or visit screenfortype1.com to learn more. Again, that's screenfortype1.com. Screen it like you mean it. Transit is better with an Orca card. Here's why. One, it's easy. Just tap and pay your way onto Metro and all other public transit around the sound. Two, your tap shows us when and where you're riding the most, so Metro can serve you better. And three, Orca cards are for everyone. 18 and younger now ride free with a free youth Orca card. So what are you waiting for? Get an Orca card, tap for transit, and make your ride count today. Visit kingcounty.gov forward slash tap for transit. 99.9 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. There's a great chat online about people who are, who are asked, hey man, what is the dumbest thing you've seen someone do at work? And I think a lot of these are why people just would rather WFH, just work from home. Work from home. That's but then, you, then you have to do stupid, oh, I guess you can do stupid stuff at home, but no one gets to see it. Yeah, and more importantly, you don't have to see anybody else doing their stupid stuff, which I have to say there are times where we're back in the building and there's not a lot of people in here, but man, you know, the, the, like last week. What happened last week? That was so dumb. Remember we had the, 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 the hair, the beard hair all over the place or maybe pube hair all over the place? I'm positive it wasn't pube hair. It had to be either hair hair on your head or, or beard hair. I hope you're right. I just feel like I don't, I, it's too close to the, you know, the bathroom and all the hair that can be there. I just go to the worst. 
Yeah, I understand that, but I, I just I'm not an authority on pubic hair. But oh, I, you I, aren't. I, but I, I feel very strongly that that wasn't pubic hair. All right, then. Because man, imagine walking in on that grooming situation. Oh like, God, yeah. It'd be weird enough. Sometimes it's weird walking into the bathroom and like one of your coworkers is brushing their teeth or yeah. like doing something that you typically expect somebody to do at home, but not that weird. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm not that that's not I, I I didn't miss that and it's back. It's back cuz we're in the workplace. Someone said a coworker photocopied a slice of pizza and the rest of the office was finding cheese and toppings in the copy machine <laughs> for weeks. <laughs> Does it explain why they were photocopying a piece of pizza? Like, I'd like to know the reason behind it. Would it make it like a flyer? I hope it a- was just they put it up in their their office, it, like framed it, and put a picture of pizza up in the their office. The best pizza I ever had. I see. I was ex- I was imagining them being stoned. They're like, you know, it'd be great if I had another slice of pizza. I know what I'm going to do, and then try to copy it to eat another slice. I think that's what you do if you have a photocopy machine at home. I don't know. Maybe he was stoned at work. Oh, yeah, maybe. It's odd. Like, there's so many things. Like, dude, if you wanted a, co- a picture of your pizza, just use your phone. Yeah, I kind of want to see what a pizza looks like if I put it through a photocopy machine. I, I think I, that's... I you too. Yeah. I mean, I would clean up. I would clean it out. I wouldn't. No? <laughs> <laughs> I want people to, to like my pizza. See, I got over all that stuff with fax machines because you could fax boobs, butts, yep. everything. So you kind of, you know, I'm, I'm over that. Hey, what would that look like if we we photocopied it or faxed it? I never photocopied my butt, but I have photocopied my stomach. Nice. And I'm glad nobody walked in on that. Why, my, you doing, why your stomach? I don't know. Honestly, I don't remember. I was That's 20s. an interesting body part. Like, of all the things you went for, you're like, oh, you know what? The stomach. I didn't want to take my pants off, but I wanted to see like, what a body part would look like photocopied. So I went with the stomach. I did do my face as well. You photocopied your face? Yeah, I just side of the face, closed my eyes so that the light wouldn't get to you. Oh, well, that was smart. Yeah. I'm responsible. <laughs> I really wish you would have that framed at your desk right now. <laughs> photocopied my the 20-something version of Steve's yes. face. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I can recreate yeah. it, but it won't look the same. <laughs> you know, no hair. Yeah, I would say the age of a photocopy pizza person had to be in their 20s. Yeah. I, I, I think if you're in your 30s doing something like that, you got to do it, really? I mean, this is what you're doing? You, you haven't already done this in your life? Okay. Someone saw a guy, again, these are the dumb things we've seen at work. Someone saw a guy super glue himself to a component he was fixing. Intentionally? Twice. <laughs> okay, no, this was not. this was an accident. Okay. Uh, he did it once, and then he inadvertently did it again when he was trying to show people how it had happened. <laughs> oh. That's amazing. I love this guy. Give then, him employee of the month. Then he super glued his eyelids together all within an hour. So after all that, you know, at, at this point, you got to keep the super glue away from this guy. Yeah, at some point, just realize that you don't super glue, don't mix. Yeah, I mean, dude, that's a, uh, I'm, a, I'm afraid to even use the stuff just for that reason because I just know me. Like, I'm really super careful. So you don't have any faith in yourself that you're not going to super glue your own eyes? Nope. Okay. I mean, I've gone on, like, my fingers a little bit, like, in where it's like, oh, shoot, it's stuck to the counter. But, you know. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, my word. Well, I use a different word that starts with the letter and oh, S and the letter H. But oh, okay. I kept it FCC friendly for everybody, for the oh, children. Oh, shucks. I stuck my finger to the counter. For the children. Yeah, you did a good job. Uh, someone worked with a tattooist who did a tattoo that said, laugh now, cry ladder across a man's chest. So L-A-D-D-E-R instead of later. Wait, so was it the tattoo artist's fault or was it the person who came in with the tattoo? Uh, that is a good question. This is a dumb thing you've seen at work. I hope the tattoo artist knows that ladder and later are, I mean, they're just such different words, but I I hope the tattoo artist, but then the tattoo artist did it. But also like... I know, Danny, you just got a tattoo. Unless it's like one where I, hey, do it freehand, and I'll just close my eyes, and when I open it, it'll be done. But more often than not, they, they stencil it out, they put it on your body part, and then they say, hey, do you like it right there? Yeah, it's really that's really confusing to me how people do that. However, I have had some texts, like you said, that have gone freehand, and I just hope that they're going to spell it right. Right, but ladder's a big difference. Like, a I feel like difference. you would notice that. So, yeah, I, 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 it makes me wonder, like, did the tattoo artist go, okay, this is what the guy wants? If I'm the guy, I just own it. I mean, at that point, it's permanent. <laughs> I'd be like, tattoo a ladder under it. Yes. Yeah, at that point, why not? Then there's a good story, at least. Yeah, have like like a little face with ladders coming out as, instead of tears. <laughs> there's a kitchen employee who forgot to put oil in the oil fryer and turned it on. And, of course, a fire shot up. Then they put water on it because that's what Ooh. you don't do with kitchen fires. Ooh. That caused a bigger fire. Have you guys seen that blanket you can buy now? That's the fireman's blanket. 
Oh, like the silver one? Yeah, I think so. It, I think yeah. it, it's in a little pouch, but you pull it out, and no matter what fire you have, you throw this on top of it rather no. than try to. Yeah, I got you, that. I got one. You I got, got a couple one? Of, yeah, because I mean, I the, they got me. Facebook got me with that targeted ad. Can you use that as like a comforter or a blanket? I have not tried, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're, it's it supposedly will just... So where are you keeping this thing? I keep them in places where you would keep a fire extinguisher, you know, like under the sink or something. You just go grab it real quick and pull it out and put it on top of the fire. We finally got one of those. Extinguisher. What, a fire extinguisher? Yeah. Oh. It's, it's one of those things where every time we go to like one of the stores, like, we should get a fire extinguisher, and then you forget. And then you're like, next time we go... And I'm, I'm thinking, one of these times, we're going to really regret this. And finally, I was just like, I'm going specifically to get a fire extinguisher. I was like, I'm not even going to play the cards anymore. I feel like we've been dodging a bullet and been very lucky for a long time. When I got my Traeger, that's when I was like, you know what? I don't trust myself with this. I need a fire yep. extinguisher. Yep. Especially with a child and yep. the ability to like turn knobs and switches. I'm like, I don't, even, I don't think she's going to do anything stupid, but let's make it stupid proof. <coughs> yeah, she, she well, the, 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 the thing that got me was they're like, you don't realize that if you use those fire extinguishers, they make a mess of everything. Even though they put the fire out, like all that crap is everywhere yeah. they put the fire out. The blanket is the blanket. Oh, yeah, Vicky's he's got a video oh, of it. there it is right there. The there's fireman's the blanket. He looks very serious. And there he is. And, and there's there a fire. Boom, just like that. And it doesn't, look at that, how the blanket stops the fire from even happening. It just <laughs> it basically just chokes out the oxygen and it's fireproof. Does it, da it damage the blanket? Well, the blanket itself, you don't care what happens to the blanket because it's supposed to put the fire out. What do you care about the blanket? It's not a blanket for you to use. It's one job is to put out fires. It's not yeah, there. But to... well, I want it for future fires. Yeah, well, I What's don't the know. warranty you... on this thing? I, I don't know. I think as long as you use it one time and it puts a fire out, isn't that good? They want you to buy more, so I bet they probably go, hey, use it just one time. But I don't like know. a heated blanket for a little bit after that. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. just feel like you're not getting what this thing is for. It is not meant to be used for anything but just to put the fire out. Someone just texted in, uh, and they said a guy came to work with his shirt inside out. I told him about it, and he just started to take his shirt off at his desk to fix it. I said, man... Maybe you should go to the bathroom and do that. That's where you got to go, sir, or the privacy room. Make sure nobody's milking themselves and just go to the privacy room. Milking themselves. <laughs> I know. I'm yeah. thankful that I've never walked in on someone milking themselves. Yeah, that would be, because that could mean a lot. But yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't need them to. Hey, someone opened a chat window to start talking smack about a coworker as we're talking about dumb things that are done at work. And they were forgetting that they were on a call with that coworker at the time. And they were sharing their screen. Oh. So they opened up a chat window while they were in a chat with that person going, you won't believe this idiot I'm talking to right now. They're a moron and, and they're like, so Guys, stupid. Guys, I'm right here. It's like, uh, I see your chat there, Jimmy. God, that's embarrassing with technology and you don't know what you're doing. Just hex out and then just say you were hacked. Yeah, I didn't do that. I, I don't swear. Even know. Uh, that was my kid. Yeah. She loves playing pranks. Stupid kid. Someone who worked at an airport said their coworker took his girlfriend through a secure area of the airport to bypass screening, and the airport was locked down. They were both arrested, and, of course, the guy was fired. Uh, God, I hate that. When you see the airport gets locked down for certain reasons, and then if you find out it was for something like this. Well, I don't understand why they just want to, they want to buck the line, or did they, were they worried that she was going to, like, set off some kind of... You know, I wonder now, was it that she wanted by the law? I don't know. Yeah, or well, was I, it just like, hey, I don't want you to wait in line. I'll just sneak you through. Yeah, I, maybe that's all it was. Was Probably. like, you know, the girlfriend might have said, "Look, can you get me by these lines? The thing is long." Yeah, sure, I'll take you this way. And they're like, "No, that's not how that works." And then he gets fired. Well, yeah, you're not going to keep a guy like that. His Damn, job is to make dude. sure no one does that. Yeah, that, but it's like, what are you thinking there, Jimmy? Come on. She must have been hot. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> I know, because, I mean, that happened. I mean, a lot of people lost their jobs over me, so I get it. Hey, someone said that it is reusable, uh, the, the the blankets. Oh, the fire blankets? Yeah. Oh, that's even a bonus. Someone said, be careful with those fireman's blankets, BJ. You have to get close to the fire to use it. Extinguishers, they allow you to keep a safe distance. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, I got to get close and put it on the fire. Yeah, I could still get hurt doing that. Oh, man. <laughs> you get her walking. Yeah, you get, know, you so get her true. with everything. I don't uh, want a fire to happen at your house. But if it does, Sarah, can you be sure to film your dad being firefighter BJ and trying to put it out? Will you wear your firefighter hat that the, the oh. Washington Council of Firefighters gave us? That's a heavy hat. I could fall over putting that thing because that hat's heavy. Yeah, but you can't put out fires without a fireman's hat. That's a good point. I mean, I, I suppose that, 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 that would help. I would look like official. Yeah. All right. So now I now I now this for the Instagram pictures. Just do it for the IG. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll forget how, what the house is looking like. I I got to make sure I'm IG friendly. 
And make sure you grab the right blanket. Yeah, I know, too. How bad would that be if I grabbed the wrong blanket and I just set up a big, massive blaze? You grab, like, a knit yeah. blanket, like yeah. some grandma made. Yeah, a It's not working. I buy one that's just, like, completely flammable. There's this dude named Ira, and you've got to check out uh, this video on the BJ and Migs page of KISW.com because Ira is the father of four, and he's going viral because he stripped down to a crop top and short shorts during a school board meeting to make a point about proposed changes to a suburban Phoenix school district dress code. So i got to imagine he's against the dress code. Uh, the, the, yeah. the, 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 the fact that people could wear this at, at school. Yeah, because board members are like, hey, let's have some new looser dress code policies, eliminating restrictions, let people have their... Uh, they're exposed midriffs, the spaghetti straps, halter tops. Basically, it's all, you know, women's clothing. It right. Seems. Uh, other board members disagree and are advocating for a more modest policy. Ira appeared before the board, stripping off his clothes as he spoke. Under the proposed policy, this would be appropriate in a classroom. Now, if you ask me, this is inappropriate for a board meeting. If you have a, a dress code policy that allows us in a classroom, it does not promote a safe classroom environment as well as limiting the amount of distractions in the classroom. I can't think of any place of work where I could walk in in an interview and be taken serious in something like this. Let's put the right policies in place to help them have success in the future. Thank you. I do enjoy this video, mainly because of the reaction of all the women behind him. I mean, it's, it, you, couldn't, you couldn't plan this better. There are about 15 <laughs> women. Not a single man is standing, is sitting behind him. And as he takes off his shirt, these women, some of them look horrified. One woman's face is just fantastic. The girl with the glasses and the white shirt that's right behind him. She's just like, what in the F what? am I watching? And other, oh, other women are just taking out their cell phones, filming the guy like, who oh, is this guy? And what oh, is he doing? It's, and he's total dad bod, too. So it's just... I, I mean, mean but uh, it's... They're just going to school. Yeah, this is... Uh, th- they're not th- going for an interview. Basically, what he's saying is, is that the boys will be, or anybody who's attracted to women, are going to be distracted by, obviously, what would be... Uh, more revealing clothes than what you would, I, I guess, wear if you couldn't wear those clothes. And that is an antiquated belief system. You know, the idea that we need to stop the distractions and therefore women have to dress a certain way so that they're not distracting. That's yeah, basically the, what he's saying. Is he a dad of, that has daughters? Because if he does, this gonna well, be, we're, they're, 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 they're going to have an interesting relationship as they get older. If you I see think. his fashion sense, of course he's got daughters. Look it's hilarious, that. dude. He looks funny. Yeah. Uh, it's like, look, or maybe we should just train uh, all the people that would be attracted to people that would dress that way to somehow be appropriate to right. folks, no they matter how they're dressed. Be respectful no matter what. Yeah, that's a, I think that's something you could, because I got news for you. Uh, you know, young boys, I'll talk about them, uh, when they're going through their hormones, it doesn't matter what anybody's wearing, they will, <laughs> they're ready to go no matter what. Sometimes with a sofa, you know, or a pie, if you watch that documentary, American Pie. So it doesn't matter what someone's dressed like. You've got to teach that person to regulate themselves when their body's going through what they're going through if you're worried about them being distracted. Do you think he ran this one by the wife ski before he left for this meeting? I, like, babe, what are you doing? Well, why, why do you have short shorts and a halter top on? Yeah. Don't worry, I'm about to make a point. Yeah, or are you, or is this what you like to do, honey? It's okay, I'm not king shaming you if this is how you want to dress. No, I'm making a point. That would be actually, that would be the ultimate irony of the story if we find out that he does this on the side. Like, this is like his actual attire that yeah. he wears. <laughs> this is what when, I wear for business. When he hits the clubs and does his own thing. Oh, man. Yeah, Wow. Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one wrong. Which layer of the earth is under the crust but above the core? The dirt. No. <laughs> the water. No. The sand. No. Yeah, sir. Think about mantle. Think about your fireplace. It's below the earth. <laughs> How about that? You want a shot at beating Steve? All right. 206-803-ROCK. We're going to play Beat Meg's going to do that at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. How long is a bankruptcy going to affect my credit rating? Of course, most of the time, by the time we're we're talking about filing a bankruptcy, the credit has already taken a huge hit. Uh, Chapter 7 is going to affect it more negatively than Chapter 13. Uh, Chapter 7 stays on your credit report for 10 years from the time you file. It usually takes 7 or 8 years for your credit scores to get back into the normal range in a Chapter 7 case. However, your credit will start to recover even in Chapter 7 after about a year. Um, You'll be able to get credit again right away, usually before uh, your case is even over. 
over. Uh, chapter 13 stays on your credit report for seven years and usually takes about three, three and a half years for your credit to get back in the normal range. So chapter 13 uh, will mean your credit gets better much more rapidly. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. Some companies are big. Others are small. To Robert Half, their hiring needs are equally huge. At Robert Half, our specialized recruiting professionals elevate their expertise with proprietary AI tools to transform candidate discovery, assessment, and selection. Whether sourcing talent locally or in any geography that works for you, Robert Half can pinpoint hard-to-find candidates in finance and accounting, technology, marketing and creative, legal, and administrative and customer support. At Robert Half, we know talent. Like any good agent, we're here for the open house, for the closing, for handing over keys. But because we're Realtors, we're here for so much more. Agents who are Realtors volunteer at nearly three times the national average. We're working to broaden access to credit, increase affordable housing supply, and ensure fair housing for all. And Realtors are bound by a code of ethics. We're here for it all. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. What if comparing car insurance rates was as easy as putting on your favorite podcast? With Progressive, it is. Just visit the Progressive website to quote with all the coverages you want. You'll see Progressive's direct rate. Then their tool will provide options from other companies so you can compare. All you need to do is choose the rate and coverage you like. Quote today at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy. Did you know that one in five children across the U.S. are at risk of hunger right now? As a grandmother, I know the importance of a filled tummy and the joy it brings. This holiday season, I invite you to join me in filling a few extra plates for the millions of hungry kids out there. With a $10 donation, you can help provide up to 100 meals. Please visit NoKidHungry.org forward slash chip in today because every child deserves a full heart and a full belly. Dealing with an accident and injury claim can be overwhelming. Let Phillips Law Firm fight for you. We understand the pain and suffering, and we're here to guide you through. Call 1-800-JUSTICE today for a free case review or visit JusticeForYou.com and let Phillips Law Firm help you on the road to recovery. Looking to give the gift of pleasure? Add a little high heat to keep the desire burning. Or maybe you just need a little self-care. Come to Lovers for the best lingerie and toys to keep things hot this holiday. Save 20% on your purchase with Lovers Afterglow Rewards. Just mention Love 20 at one of our 18 Western Washington locations. Offer valid with free Lovers Afterglow Rewards membership until November 30th. Some exclusions apply. Your home is going into foreclosure and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. On Friday, November 17th, 7 p.m., live day goes to prom night. And it's just like the prom, you know, it's like what you expect from live day. All the stuff is live. Sound effects, music. We'll have special guests. The music's. The music's. Friday, November 17th, 7 p.m. So it's a Friday night. You don't have to miss work. The next day is a Saturday, so you'll probably have that off. It's going to be a blast. Get done with work. Hang out with us at Snoqualmie Casino. We're doing our show live. Also, the men's room, we're doing their show live as well. And we'll be partying with all the rockaholics as they're dressed up in their favorite prom attire. And we will be picking a prom king and queen, so be sure to get dressed. Yeah, man. You want tickets? You know you do. This is the one you can finally go to. Live day, going to prom night. Tickets on sale now at snocasino.com. Let's play B. Ready 
to be mixed. I know Andy from Olympia is. Andy, are you there? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, Steve, now get out of here. For those playing at home, Andy has 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. You can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. The Mountain Dew Baja Blast drink was created for what fast food restaurant? Taco Bell. Yes. Despite its name, the Colorado Desert is actually in what U.S. state? Oh, um, um, Nevada. No. Uh, Arizona. No. Mexico. No. New Mexico. The Sanderson sisters are witches from what Halloween movie? Oh, God, uh... Hocus Pocus? Yes. yes. What vegetable was the first to be grown in space? Ooh. Zucchini. No. Cucumber. No. Apple. Uh, How many times has Tommy Lee been married? Four. Yes. Big Major K is an island in the Bahamas where you can swim with what domesticated animal? Dolphin. No. Orcas. No. Stingrays. No. A sub above is the slogan for what sandwich chain? A sub above? Yes. Um, Jersey Mike. Jersey Mike. Yes. yes. Their hit song, Here Comes the Sun, was first released on what Beatles album? Oh, God. I'm not that old. The White House? No. Uh, nice try, though. <laughs> Andy, you get four correct. All right. Uh, well, Andy and friends. Andy and friends. They tried. They tried. <laughs> They helped him out, so... Yeah, seriously. I mean, you know, they, they, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, I think they're still going to get beat, though. Yeah, that's the problem. Well, we'll see. Steve's oh, taking on an entire crew, and he probably oh, will man. win. Yep. That is some crazy talk. Steve, are you ready? Uh, speaking of taking on an entire crew, I do want to give a shout-out to somebody, because if I give this person a shout-out, apparently they get out early today from their job. Oh! Okay? Give it out a shout-out. So I said, hello, this is Sarah Moore from Local 86. If I get a shout out, I get out of my apprenticeship early today. That's so shout awesome. out to Sarah Moore from Local 86. That's right. You know what? We you know what we like about Sarah? She doesn't give you less, she gives you more. Wow. Hey. And she has the best first name ever. So Does she though? And yes. she spells it without an H. Oh, my wow. girl. All right, so we cool. work now. Okay, she's cool. Okay, so now are you ready? Let's go. The Mountain Dew Baja Blast drink was created for what fast food restaurant? McDonald's? No. Um, fast food, Burger King? No. Uh, Taco Bell. Yes. There we go. Despite its name, the Colorado Desert is actually in what U.S. state? Nevada. No. Uh, Washington. No. California. Yes. There you go. The hey. Sanderson sisters are witches from what Halloween movie? Hocus Pocus. Yes. Gosh. What vegetable was first to be grown in space? A pumpkin. No. Uh, an apple? <laughs> no. That's not a vegetable. A carrot. Oh, okay, then. No. Okay, then. How many times has Tommy Lee been married? Three. No. Four. Yes. Nice. Big Major K is an island in the Bahamas where you can sw swim with what domesticated animal? Dogs? No. Dolphins? No. <laughs> um, turtles? <laughs> no. A sub above is the slogan for what sandwich Subway. chain? No. Oh. Jersey Mike's. Yes. Their hit song, Here Comes the Sun, was first released on what Beatles album? Is that Revolver? No. Uh, Sergeant Peppers? No. Uh, Yellow Submarine? No. no sir. Who is the Greek god of war? Oh, He's yeah. the Greek god of Thor. No. no. He is the Norse god of thunder, sir. Steve, you get five correct, which barely oh, is a win. Five yeah. to four. Andy, Andy, Andy. Barely. Oh, so oh. close, buddy, but you lost. Thanks for playing, though. You and the buddies. Have a good day. All right, you too, buddy. Try again, though, Andy. You and the crew. I know you can do it. You just need better questions. Okay. It wasn't the questions fault. Oh, I it mean, wasn't? I have to say, those were great questions. Half of them. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't do too well either, to be honest. I still won. That's all that matters. Uh, what vegetable was the first to be grown in space? I'm not going to say tomato because that's a fruit. No. Onion? No, I always forget this is a vegetable, though. Oh. Vicky loves them in all varieties. Oh, Brussels sprouts. Potato. Oh, yeah. potato is a vegetable. You're right. Yes. And that's a good vegetable to grow. Did, did Matt Damon grow those in that Mars movie? I think he might have. I should remember that. I think in the, the Martian, he grew potatoes.
Uh, big major K. <laughs> right. I just think that's probably why they did that, because it's a good space vegetable. I guess. Yeah. Big major K is an island in the Bahamas where you can swim with what domesticated animal? Is it a seal? Pigs. Oh, pigs. 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 Yes. Why that's would right. you want to do that? This place is really famous for it. Oh, people love that. They love swimming with the pigs? Yeah. They could just swim with me and I'll charge them pigs half. Pigs are fun, man. Are they? Yeah, they're cute. Would they no. be fun to swim with? No, I don't yeah, find pigs at least they're cute. clean. They're not like sitting in dirt and mud and stuff. I, I don't know what it is about a pig. They're gonna be. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. A pig and I, I mean, I, I'll you don't eat even you, like those little pigs? It. Yeah, you know, you know, huff and puff and eat them. You know, that's oh, all I do. Okay. Well, sorry. Here Comes the Sun is on what Beatles album? Is it Let It Be? No, it's like, in my opinion, I'm not a Beatles fan, but their most biggest album. Really? Yeah. Okay. Abbey Road? Oh, oh yeah. duh, you're right. I, most iconic cover, I'm that's such for a sure. Dope. <laughs> you guys yeah. are just looking at me like I'm yeah. crazy. I'm like, is no, this really not, not an no, album? No, no, you're, tell you're, you uh, I'm not a Beatles fan without saying I'm not a Beatles fan. I'm <laughs> such a moron. I feel. Yeah, you're right. Abbey Road is the one with the most famous cover out of all their albums. Yeah, I'm not an for idiot. Sure. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, buddy. And who is the Greek god of war? That's Arius. Sir. That is. Yes. Cool. He was the guy that fought Wonder Woman at the end of her first movie. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, buddy. And he was tricking movie. a. He was the crowd. The first movie was good. The I wonder. The second movie. <laughs> yeah. The second movie was fantastic. Yeah, you are high, sir. No, I'm not. I watched it sober. Well, the, there are people that did watch it high, and that's the only way you could like that movie. Pedro Pascal, he should remove that from his resume. That was, All I oh. say is don't watch it in one sitting. If you watch it in one <laughs> sitting, it's not going to be good. Yes, you know what? That's a, a beautiful testament to a movie right there. You break it up into a little yeah. mini episodes. Yeah. No, then it becomes you. like a mini series. I really don't want to. All right, fine. Yeah. All right, it's time for you. Time for listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. Call us, text us, 206-803-ROCK. What do you want to talk about? We got your calls. We got your texts. We're going to take those at 917 on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. Brought to you by Jersey Mike's, a sub above, 206-803-ROCK. That is the number to call. That is the number to text. Remember, Steve has a rule. It's a simple rule, BJ. Show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we're gonging you. And then saying goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. 206-803-ROCK, the number to call, the number to text. Let's go to Al, listening on the Odyssey app in Virginia, A-U-D-A-C-Y. Al, you're on the rock. How you doing, guys? Not too bad, Al. What you got for us? Hey, I want to know what's the best practical joke you ever played on somebody. Ooh. Oh, do you have one yourself? I, I do. This would be do you want to hear it? This would be a good time to tell us. I don't know. I, I, we haven't decided if we want to hear it yet. <laughs> oh, hold no, on. Yeah. Steve okay, is yes, trying to figure. Okay. All right. He says yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. So last year I, I, uh, I came across a batch of stickers that said for rectal use only. <laughs> oh, very okay. nice. And I slowly applied them to all of my wife's pill bottles. <laughs> oh, and after about a wow. and after about a week, she went to the pharmacist to complain about all the suppository she was getting. <laughs> Did she really use it? Yeah, it oh was my. great. Oh boy! And did I, she I, find out you were responsible? Oh yeah. So how many days were you on the couch for? Her? Oh, I'm still there, buddy. It's good to see you. <laughs> yeah, it takes a brave man to pull you a practical finally upgraded joke. from outside to living back inside the house. <laughs> I would. I, that's I, funny. I can't imagine anybody having the, the guts to do that to their wife. You, that, that's a hell of a move, man. Wow. Well, I, I've never, I've never well, pulled anything good, that epic. The good news is her butt will never get diabetes. <laughs> I don't know if any of this is just a make em up. But I feel like not, if, it, 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 it's, if it's hard it's to say. It's not a make up. You know, shame on your wife for just willingly, <laughs> willy nilly, just grabbing pills and popping them up there. I'd be like, I don't know if this is the way it's supposed to go. Yeah, I mean, because when I get pills, they tell me what to do at the beginning. And so the fact that she forgets what she's supposed to do and she's putting pills up the old Wazuski, maybe uh, in a way you go, honey, are you that bright anyway? I, uh, man. That's uh, why I married her. There we go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I do uh, want to put the rectal use only stickers everywhere. I think that'd be fun, like at a gas station, yeah. put it on like the on the, <laughs> the, hose. On the hose. You know, like just oh, find like random spots. That's a good thing. Now, see, I like that. 
That's a, that, I, I think that's a pretty good idea. Well, yeah. thanks for the call, Al. That's uh, yeah. I, you know, I'm not a practical joke guy, so I hate them. Uh, I hate them ha- having done to me, and and I'm really bad at it. Like my practical jokes end up hurting people's feelings, so I stop doing it. I've only done. I can only think of one practical joke that I did where, but I also made sure that we had a, a we had it taken care of so that the practical joke wasn't going to screw the person over. It wasn't anything big, but I remember in wrestling, a lot of like guys will hit you up and be like, "Hey." If I give you my cell phone, will you film my match, record my match? That way I have footage of it in case, like, it doesn't get put on, like, IWT, you know, any of these, like, streaming services or on YouTube or whatever. I'm like, so one of my buddies said, hey, could you film my match? Absolutely, fine. So I have it, and I set it so that it was in selfie mode. And I recorded his entire match just with it on my face. Oh, man. And just like, so anytime you look out in the crowd, he saw me holding his cell phone. Yeah, yeah. And I had one of my other buddies like, hey, can you film his match on your phone? And we could just dro- airdrop it to him. But <laughs> so I filmed the whole thing. And I'm like, here you go, man. It was a great match. Fast forward, maybe an hour goes by. And he comes over all like bummed. I'm like, oh, man, here we go. He goes, yeah. He's like, hey, man, I hate to break this to you, but. You you didn't film my match the right way, so he thought I was such an idiot. <laughs> so he felt bad for me. He's like, oh man, I I should have told you, but you had it in selfie mode the whole time. I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> and so and my other friends had to leave the room because they're just like, I don't know what's funnier, the fact that you pranked him or the fact that he thinks you're so stupid that you would act. So he almost kind of like it backfired in a sense. Yeah, because you'd see your face. Right, like how would he not? Like unless he was, unless he was just like, is he? And I, I guess I wouldn't think you're pranking me. So I no. go, how dumb is he that he doesn't notice his face for the entire match? And this is like a solid 15 minute video yeah. of me just holding it. That's nice. great. And I didn't, I didn't even play into the camera. I'm acting like I'm watching. Like, and every time something cool happened, I'm like, whoa. Awesome. Nice job. I was about and, to ask it. Did you do anything weird? Like lick your lips randomly? Uh, just- maybe. I was treating it like <laughs> as if I was filming it. And then, so he was all said that. He, and I was like, oh, no. And then finally I had to let him in on it because I was like, we have the actual video and we're all good. It's so funny how people are because I would have just said you're an idiot. Yes. I would have been so angry going, what is wrong with you? How do you not realize you're in the wrong mode? Right. Because you would think you'd be like, okay, if it's a joke, you would stop after a couple minutes. No, 15 minutes of just a close up of my face. Yeah, that would have been. I would. I would have been reaming the hell out of you. That. That's awesome. Oh yeah, well, that's, yeah. A good, that's a good one. You have to know which people to pull those kind of pranks yeah. on. Yeah, and he had a good sense of humor. So I was like, okay, I, I know I can get away with it from this guy. Yeah, I, 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 I'm. I don't like them, and like I said, I don't know how to do them well because mm-hmm. they, they end up being too serious, and people get mad at me, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to stop this. Four this. people just died because of your prank, VJ. Yeah, it's kind of like, all right, you're right. I suppose I should stop this. This is not my forte. So I said, speaking of pranks and dumb coworkers, well, one of my coworkers pissed off one of our not so nice coworkers. So to get revenge, he duct taped a flashlight to the other employee's exhaust on his truck. So when that thing started out, it was hilarious. It was just flapping everywhere. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a noisemaker. Yeah. Oh. 206-803-ROCK, the number to call, the number to text. It is listeners on the loose. Uh, someone, uh, I'm trying to find that text I just recently saw. Oh, uh, recently it was Amazon Big Prime deal day. Oh, yeah. Um, the 10th it, and the 11th, yeah. Okay, so it's over now because they texted us yesterday. They said, hey, if your last purchase from Amazon is your weapon in battle, what is it? Ooh. Okay. Let me take them. I want to just look on my phone. Oh, man, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what I got from Amazon just uh, not too long ago because I'm an Amazon guy. Boys, we are uh, dead if we have to go to battle with what I bought last. Okay. Same so, here, actually. All right. Where are my orders? Uh, there are my last orders. And uh, let's just see. <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, you know what? If you need some decaf coffee for your Keurig, uh, they're little, they're pro- little projectiles. <laughs> I can toss them at the people. And it's decaf, so they won't be caffeinated as much as we are. If we're going to war with somebody and going to battle, I'm sure we'd have like some animals that are going to fight with us. So they're going to have a lot of anxiety. So maybe mine is a good thing, too, because I just purchased the original Snuggle Puppy Heartbeat Stuffed Toy Dog. <laughs> For our dogs that have anxiety in their crates. We have that. How'd it work? You don't want to know what my, the, our, our dog's doing with that. <laughs> <laughs> Making love to it? Oh, yeah. Well, it's got like a little heating pack. Dude, it is unbelievable. It's hot and nasty dude, in oh, that dude, kennel. Dude, that's all I saw when I was down in California with our new puppy. Dude, he no. doesn't care. 
we're on the he's on the couch and we put it it's on the couch and he is going to town on that thing it doesn't we never even get to put the little heartbeat in there he doesn't want it for that yeah he's like he's, I'll, I'll i'll get the heart race going it's like a <laughs> bang bus for him it's not well, fortunately we have a female dog so i don't have to worry about that you'd be surprised uh, yeah but you never know because what was it yesterday that we were talking about how like our dog is just insane right now and we're just trying to we're trying our best to get this to work and somebody who has a similar breed was just like we got one of these things for the crate training, and day one, our dog calmed down and now loves being in the crate. And, and then I read all these reviews about this stupid thing. Yeah. And the reviews are ridiculous. Like, there's thousands of reviews of people saying, yeah, we did not expect this was going to work, but it actually worked. Yeah, it's a cool thing. It is a cool thing. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm worried that our dog's just going to rip it apart. No, You know what? It, it, I thought that, too, but they really tend to cuddle up to it, or in my dog's case. It. Dude, it is. Oh, it's disturbing. It is the weirdest thing. I would have never. Oh. I would think that this is a dumb prank or a dumb gift idea that really doesn't work. But so many people swear by these things because they all, you know, when they're little puppies, they sleep with each other, and of course, their heartbeat yep. really helps them. So it, and it really, helps with the separation anxiety of being yeah. in the crate by themselves because now they have like something that sounds like it's alive. Yeah, it 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 really. <laughs> I mean, again, we had the we had it in there, let the thing beat, and it beats. So it's it's a good heartbeat, and we thought okay, but then all of a sudden, as as he got older, he was like, you know what, this relationship, I'm taking it to the next level. I'm picturing. <laughs> yours looking like one of those old school sex toys like the yeah, dolls yeah. like the blow up ones with like the big like o oh mouth dude and i'm like what kind of a uh, stuffed animal thing did you get here's the thing okay i mean i'm gonna try to be as he you know obviously this isn't anatomically correct because it's not designed for that uh -huh. so to see him flip this everywhere to try to find the right place to go oh is wait. just like it's i mean it's entertainment i mean i i i mean i have to say we're watching a show and then all of a sudden i pause the show because i'm like this dude uh -huh. will not stop he is flipping this thing every way he can to figure out exactly pretty much where he needs to be and steve it's been a long time since i've had a male dog it's just disturbing when that male dog is ready to go oh the red rocket yeah i forgot all about that and he's honest to god he's a tiny dog and it is almost like where do you store that it's <laughs> like you what, is, it a, is it like a fruit roll up like, how is that happening it's like that pointer that extends and it yes. keeps extending it's i mean it's just like my god that's impossible this is this is no way you can keep i mean like what the hell, man? Well, is it helping his anxiety? Oh, he's having a great time. I'd imagine he probably gets excited to go into the, the oh, crate. Oh, he, wherever that dog is, it's just like, and it's, so we, the dog is everywhere now. It's, it's just like, like, oh, sweet, they're putting that slutty dog again in the, in yeah. the crate with me. If we want, yeah, if we wanted to have any sort of like, you know, quiet meal or whatever, you put the dog somewhere and they're like, and he's like, all right, there's my girl. It's All time. right, Vicky, we're going to battle. What are we using as your weapon? Well, BJ got decaf. I got Celsius sparkling Fuji apple pear 12-pack energy drinks. Oh, there we go. See, now those are good projectiles. Yes, and yeah. they're delicious. And also, if we're getting a little tired, we could crush a couple of them. <laughs> That's what I'm crushing right now. Yeah, yeah, man. We have two options for mine. Oh, so we bought two things at the same time. Two things at the same time. They're completely different. Hot sauce from the offspring. Oh, so far so good. Or sexy lingerie for my girlfriend. Ooh. Well, they both want one could blind them and the other one, depending on who's wearing that lingerie, could do also we blind have them. to wear the lingerie. I, we could do however we want to do I it. I feel like our opponents are going to retreat. If that yes. Happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you ever seen people take like underwear or bras and use them as slingshots? We could ah. definitely, you know, get some okay. stuff and throw them against whatever we need to. I mean, it's see through, so I'm not sure of the stability of it. <laughs> I love that you purchase sexy lingerie through Amazon. Oh yeah, yeah. and you're yeah. purchasing it for her, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're and you're and you're hoping it works. Oh, I know it works. Oh, good for you. Yeah. I'm always afraid whenever, like, if, it's prime if I, time, I, baby. Go yeah, to Victoria's buddy. Secret and go. God, there's so much. What if she doesn't like it? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I, I get real panic attacks in Victoria's Secret. It's just like, never mind. Yeah, the other thing I purchased were those uh, those Adidas clog slide sandal things yeah. that I got for a live day. It's good for battle, man. You'll, you'll, you'll be comfortable as you're fighting. No, they'll be laughing how silly I look. <laughs> so we'll be able to take them out that way. Okay, I like that. So, so we're dressed up in lingerie with those Adidas uh, Crocs. Let's yeah. go. Uh, so, Joe, what about you? Uh, the last thing I bought was a suitcase. So, oh, because you're heading off to North Carolina. That's right. So, oh, not a bad item. I mean, I could throw that at people. Did yeah. you get some sexy lingerie also from <laughs> Amazon.com? There that we might go. Have been something purchased. Ooh. Well, in a suitcase, you know what? You can. You, you know, I've seen people like in the in, in the Seagal movies and stuff like that. You know, beat me you know, or a James Bond movie beat people up with a suitcase. 
I yeah. think there was one James Bond you think movie. Your son's gonna go to battle with a suitcase. Well, remember Nick Knack? I don't know if you guys might remember Nick Knack was her Villachez, the little mini guy. And before he was on Fantasy Island, he was in the James Bond movies as a villain, uh, Mister Scaramanga. And James Bond locked him in a suitcase. That's, I do remember that's that how scene. he beat him up. It was a fight on a train, and I, he jumped off the like the luggage rack on the train. I've only seen oh. it on YouTube, and it is very entertaining. Oh, it's the ah. greatest fight scene ever. And he, I think it's how he ended it is he he, he put Nick Knack in the suitcase, which it's, I thought was fantastic. It's like the scene from I think was it The Hangover. Where they opened up the, the trunk and oh, yeah. it was a Ken oh, Jung yeah. yeah. oh, jumps yeah, yeah, yeah. out and just yeah. jumps out and I, like, you just aren't expecting that and it's one of the funniest scenes oh. because of just how unexpected it was. So good. All right, so Sarah, last thing you bought on Amazon that we need to take with us into a fight. I don't know how helpful this is going to be, but hopefully will be my live day prom dress. Ooh. You bought oh. your dress on Amazon? Yes, yesterday. I don't know how it's going to work. Are you going to you know? be well dressed for this battle? Yeah, ex- <laughs> yes, I will. People might see some things. They're going to go, whatnot, wow, these but... guys must be tough. Look how professional she looks out there. Yeah. She's got the prom dress. I still got to get my tuxedo shirt still from, and it looks like Amazon Scott's. Oh, so you are you wearing the tuxedo shirt with the bottom of the uh, tracksuit, or it's going to be under the tracksuit? Well, yeah, I'm going to open up the tracksuit to be classy ah. and, have, and show my ah. bow tie. And there we go. Right, so that's so it's like if Paulie Walnuts was trying to be looking classy, that's what you'd look like. You know it. Oh, All maybe right. I'll get like an actual tuxedo shirt. Oh, <laughs> it's only ten dollars more than the uh, T-shirt. Look at this. That already sounds too fancy for you. Yeah, yeah. And, and more effort than I want to put into. Yeah, I feel yeah. like that's just you, you got to go with the T-shirt, man. Yeah, yeah, buddy. To match the rest of your outfit. It's listeners on the loose where you pick the topic, you guide the show. Two zero six eight zero three rock. More of your calls, more of your texts. We'll take those at nine thirty four on the Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. We all know cats are intelligent. Felix Cat Insurance was able to secretly record two cats on a hidden microphone. Let's listen in. Did you hear the one about the three dogs at the park? That's old, like four lives ago. But did you hear about the new pet insurance just for cats from FelixCatInsurance.com? Of course. What do I look like, a dog? When you're coughing up a fur ball. Yes. Listen, Felix Cat Insurance plans start at under $1 per day and are as unique as you and me. They call it whisker to tail protection. <laughs> Even fur balls? Even that. Remember the last time you had a fur ball? I made a TikTok. It went viral. <laughs> oh, that's good. Wait, you're on social media? There you have it. Felix Cat Insurance. Customizable coverage exclusively for felines. Sorry, no dogs allowed. FelixCatInsurance.com. Get it? Meow. Insurance is underwritten by Independence American Insurance Company and produced by Independence Pet Group. Pre-existing conditions are not covered. For all terms and limitations, visit FelixCatInsurance.com slash terms. This holiday season, make your journey memorable with Travel Centers of America. Visit our one-stop shop for all your holiday travel needs. Fuel up, get snacks, and dine at one of our full-service restaurants. Hit the road with peace of mind knowing we've got you covered. Travel Centers of America. From the very beginning, your kids mean everything to you. That means you do anything for them, especially if they're at risk. So when it comes to type 1 diabetes, screen it like you mean it. Because even if just one person in the family has it, your child is up to 15 times more likely to get it, too. Screen it like you mean it. Because type 1 diabetes can develop at any age. And once you get results, you can get prepared for your child's future. So screen it like you mean it. Type 1 starts long before there are symptoms. But one blood test could help you spot it early, before they need insulin, and could lower the risk of serious complications like diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA. Talk to your doctor about how to screen for type 1 diabetes, because the more you know, the more you can do. So don't wait. Tap now or visit screenfortype1.com to learn more. Again, that's screenfortype1.com. Screen it like you mean it. Transit is better with an Orca card. Here's why. One, it's easy. Just tap and pay your way onto Metro and all other public transit around the sound. Two, your tap shows us when and where you're riding the most, so Metro can serve you better. And three, Orca cards are for everyone. 18 and younger now ride free with a free youth Orca card. So what are you waiting for? Get an Orca card, tap for transit, and make your ride count today. Visit kingcounty.gov forward slash tap for transit. 
99.9 KISW, the Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. 206-803-ROCK, the number to call, the number to text. Lenny in Tacoma, you are on the rock. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Lenny. What you got for us, buddy? Well, um, this is a prank that I did back in the 80s, but let me preface it first. I'm out here salmon fishing, and if I get a fish, I'm going to hang up and call back. But uh, anyhow. Okay, I like, my- I, I like these priorities, and I support them. Yes, thank you. Uh, my, my prank was back in the 80s. I was working in a produce department, and I couldn't stand one of my coworkers. So one morning, I went over to the deli, and I got some Limburger cheese, and I folded the sweatband down on the hat that we had to, you know, we had to wear hats. I folded the sweatband down on his hat and smeared it with Limburger cheese, and then I, and then I put it in the cooler so it didn't stink right away. And the more he wore that hat as the day wore on, everybody was going, man, you stink. And he couldn't, for the life of me, figure out what was going on. Oh, man. Oh, man, that's a beating. You know, the supermarket days, man, Lenny, thanks for the call. Good luck on the fish. Let us know. Hey, call us back if uh, you catch a fish with a now before we leave at 10. What's the biggest fish okay, you've ever caught? Good. Lenny, what's the biggest fish you ever caught? Uh, 50 pounds off Point Robinson in Des Moines in uh, about 15 years ago. Dude, Whoa. that's... So I just found out because we were at the vet for our new pup, but our daughter walked on the scale that the dogs go on, and she was 45 pounds. Whoa! So that 50 pounds is a big-ass fish. Was that a... And that's a salmon? Yeah, it was a king salmon. Whoa. It was uh, August 31st. I think it would, pro- would have probably been in, like, uh, 84 or something. Wow. How, long did, how long did that feed you, man? Yeah. A long time. I smoked a good portion of that, and it it went very well at parties. Damn, dude, I bet it did, man. There's, a, I, I think of that. Oh show. my gosh, Vicky found a picture of what Whoa. is a fifty pound salmon, and that thing is about as long as a person. It's wow, my size. Damn, yeah. dude, it might be taller than you, Vicky. <laughs> yes. God, I watch those shows like Alone where they throw people out there and they got nothing and they have to find a way to live and they're always trying to shoot birds and catch fish. And I'm thinking, if a dude ever got that, he'd be set. He'd like be able to outlast everybody. But then, like, how do you even pull that in? I can't imagine that's on, like, a fishing line. Yeah, 50. You have, well, 50 pounds. Because so you're trying to, like, bring that in on, like, a fishing line? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the line's got to be strong enough, yeah. right? Damn. How I else would you do you it? I you do, but once you get it close to the shore, you have a net. A oh, net yeah, a little scooper? Yeah. I hope so. That's huge. That's a big boy. I mean, that's, I mean, that yeah, could... Yeah, probably like, not like, like, like a random toy shop version of a, to- uh, a fishing Robin The Paw Patrol one. Robin, yeah, like a joke <laughs> one. I don't think you're going to be able to pull that thing in with that. What kind of boat do you have, too? Because that's 50 pounds. That guy, you flip that in the wrong way, you uh, might tip over the whole boat. Well, salmon fishing is river fishing, so he's probably not in a boat. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Oh, so he's like, like the river this, runs the, through it with the big boots on? The big pants or boots, yeah. Could be, yeah. Oh. Or it's on the shore. I don't know anything about fishing, I except my father, <laughs> yeah, my father took me one time and said, you're too loud. You, you're never coming again. You're scaring the fish, man. <laughs> it's so true. Plus, I was disturbing their silence because they didn't want to hear anything either because they always heard their family all the time. And I, I was a reminder of how they didn't want me there anymore. 50 pounds. Though. Yeah, it's a lot, man. 206-803-ROCK, the number to call, the number to text. It is Listeners on the Loose. We receive a lot of strange questions during well, Listeners on the Loose. This I'm might ready. be one of the strangest ones because I'm, I'm now, it's kind of make, making my brain kind of move in weird ways. Like, how do I even figure this one out? Uh-oh. Oh. If you could go to the bathroom at any celebrity's house, who would it be and why? Oh. Oh. Huh. Wow. Well, Is I... her name Stoya? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. I, I, I'm i trying to think of what celebrity would have their celebrity in their bathroom, like maybe awards or posters or some cool paraphernalia. Like some people do put cool stuff in their bathroom. And I'm trying to think who would have that. Oh, I got one. Yeah. Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, that would be because you think everything would be supersized? Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it would be cool. I can't imagine he has a normal sized toilet bowl. That's right. Right? Yeah, he's got to have a yeah, he's got to have a big boy. I mean, not only because of the size, like circumference, because he's a big boy, but the height. Also, the height, like that, would be really difficult for him to get up off of his toilet bowl. Apparently, he has been asked this question before, and he told me Lacuna is that he uses a regular toilet like everybody else. It's uh, good to see that he keeps things humble, but right. <laughs> I got a super. I got a higher toilet than normal when I remodeled the bathroom because I I wondered if I was old if I'd be able to get up. So I thought, just let's get this bigger toilet now and make it easy. 
I'm just picturing like Shaquille O'Neal having like a toilet that like you sit on and then you hit a button and it kind of propels you up off the seat. Oh, you're doing that. You're you're talking about the entire ca- plot of one of the uh, seasons of uh, oh that Jane Fonda show and Lily Tomlin. What the hell is that called, Vicky? Uh, uh, Grace and Frankie. Yeah, because oh, yeah, she, you know me, big Grace and Frankie. Fan. Well, Jane Fonda couldn't get off the toilet, yeah. and so she created a toilet that did just that. that. Well, like the character did. Like a rest, like the wrestler Big Show, who's like seven foot and he's four hundred pounds. Yeah, I can't imagine you're sitting on. A, I mean, so maybe Shaq is. I can't picture those. I'm not typically picturing those guys on the on a bowl, but I can't picture them on like a regular sized toilet. Yeah, bowl. well, I mean, he's a big man. He says he uses. Well, I guess he has to use a regular toilet when he goes places. So maybe he's just used to it. Because I mean, you, if he goes into a like an airplane bathroom, they don't have special toilets for him. Yeah, but I still think, like, you know, if you're at home, when you want the most comfortable situation, especially for Rich as F. I would. Yeah, I would. So I wonder I wonder why he doesn't do it. Someone said, I want Chad, I want to go to Chad Kr- Kroger's or, Kr- was it Krager? Krieger. Krieger, whatever now, from Nickelback. Kruger. Because- Kruger. Kruger. Like Freddy I said, Kruger. Kruger. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, has a, he said that he has a bathroom big enough to play baseball in. Oh. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. I'd like to see that. Yeah. I don't maybe know he has why like a he, swimming pool in there. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe he does have a swimming pool in there. That's interesting. I was thinking like some of my Star Trek people, uh, but I feel do like you think they're gonna have like a captain seat that looks like a toilet bowl. That's what I would be hoping. That's what you would do if you had the money. I would. Yeah, oh, but if you I had a bathroom that looked like the Enterprise. Oh man, like the, was it the bridge or the yeah, deck? Or whatever? Exactly. Like yeah. the captain's chair would be right in the bathroom, and you're surrounded by all. Oh, that would be so cool. But I don't think Shatner has that. He likes horses so much that I feel like there's just going to be like equestrian stuff all over his house. Oh, bathroom. I thought you say the toilet looks like a horse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, that would be interesting. And you like saddle up on it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yeehaw. Yeah. So you say, can I use all of Russell Wilson's toilets? Mr. Unlimited. What does he have, 12? Yes. Yeah. That's because, well, you know what? He should get he should get 17 because that's how many times his team is going to go down the toilet, 17 times this season. Well, no, he already got one win. All right, so he only needs 16 then. Do you think that they'll have more than five wins this year? No. 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 Do we think they're going to have more than three wins this Ooh, year? Oh, that's tough. That is tough. They might. Uh, I, who did they beat? Did they beat anybody in their division? Because uh, I mean, they got the Raiders, the Chargers, and the Broncos. Uh, and, and who else? Uh, there's one more team, and I'm missing it. Uh, Chargers, Raiders, Broncos, uh, and who's the fourth one that I can't think of in my brain? Uh, I can't think of it for whatever reason. So, whoever that fourth uh, AFC West team is, I uh, boy, it's probably the leader, and I should know. Uh, Chiefs. Chiefs. Oh, duh. Chargers, Raiders, Broncos. Yeah. Yeah. So that's right. Yeah. So they're going to they're, 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 uh, they're gonna lose to the Chiefs both games. I don't know. They might win tonight. You just never know. If they win tonight, then Every yeah, all bets are off. differently against each other. You just don't know. All bets are off if they win tonight. But I, I'd be sh- that would be a shocker if they win tonight. So they only, the only team that they beat was the Bears. Yeah. And they beat them 31 to 28. So it was a close game. And the Bears are not good. Well, neither are the Broncos. So they haven't beaten anybody in their division yet, right? Not, well, no, they've only beaten the Bears. That's it. Yeah. And so I don't know if they played anybody in their division. I think they might have already. But I don't, yeah, I'm, I, I don't know who else they're facing. But well, you, I, got the, you got the Packers next week. They should lose to them. Then they got the Chiefs again. Yeah. <laughs> Why the Bills? The Bills? Yep. They're going to lose to them. The Vikings? Uh, that They could beat the Vikings. The Browns? Uh, they should lose to the Browns. The Texans? The Texans, I don't know. How, I don't think they're that good. I don't know. Chargers? Uh, uh, Chargers, they should lose to. Lions? They should definitely lose to the Lions. Patriots, I think they could beat. You're right. They could beat the Patriots. So maybe that's, three, that's two or three wins at that point. Yeah. Then the Chargers. Yeah. And then the Raiders. That's why I think five is a good number. Over under for five is probably the best number. Because I think that some of those games they could win. I don't think they're going to win more than five. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. I know, dude. Another four or five win seat. Oh, my goodness. It's, yeah, it's really, really. This time, at least they get their own draft picks. But at this point, you're two years into Russell Wilson with that ridiculous contract. If I'm Russell, do I make an adjustment? I think you've got to make an adjustment and say, look, I'm giving some money back because I want our team to be competitive and we can go out and get people during free agency because he's just making so much that you can't, you can't win with – that guy's not good enough to win with that kind of uh, outlay of cash. You just can't. I mean, they need so much help. So I, I, they, what, a, what a horrible decision. And then Sean Payton. <laughs> oh, all of it's just so bad. We got uh, – oh, hey, Lenny and Tacoma's back, everybody. Nice. Lenny, you are on the fish? rock. Hey, I'm back. Uh, right after that last call ended, I got I just got slammed. I got a nice seven or eight pound coho in the boat. 
Charlie boat. Well, good luck, Charlie. Oh, it turns out yeah, you and that and that that uh, last fish, the fifty pounder, was in a twenty two foot hydro sport that I own. Oh, so yeah, it yeah. was definitely in a boat. Wow. So okay, so what happens when you so you you have like a fishing line? I mean, I, I, apologies for sounding so ignorant. Oh no, we're noobs. We're so we're we're, we're, we're worse than noobs. You cast out the line, you get a bite, and all of a sudden now you're trying to reel this thing in, but it's fifty pounds. At what point do you realize? Ah, like, when do you realize, oh, crap, this thing is super heavy? Well, they wear out pretty quick when they're that big. I mean, they burn a lot of energy on that first or second run, and then pretty much after that, they're, they just, they, it's not that hard to bring them in and then net them right at the boat and drag them inside. Oh, so you're doing net them. Done. Okay. Man. And was it just you, or did you have some help? I fish solo 99.9% .9 of the time. Oh, well, of course, you're better. It. Did you like the KISW plug? I did. Like <laughs> sure did, buddy. <laughs> so you do it by yourself. How many years have you been married? Uh, I I got divorced back in 1980, and I've uh, said I will a couple times, but never I do after that. How about that? <laughs> I, I will I whenever will. I do. Uh, <laughs> the, I, the, I, the, I, the I wills are a lot cheaper to get out of than the I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you can still go fishing. Yeah. That, you know yeah. what, Lenny? You never look back and look at you. You're living the dream, buddy. Well, congrats on the fish. Yeah. Right, we got to let you go, Lenny, because it's very windy but, windy. but, yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations, man. I like that. That's kind of fun. If anyone catches a fish while they're listening to our show, they should call in and tell us how many pounds it is. <laughs> first of all, congratulations that during the time where people are like starting their first hour of work, you're out fishing. I had faith. That's great. It, it, it's, you know, not the greatest weather out there. It's not horrible either, but I mean, it was windy, obviously. You got, you got to, you just got to love it, you know, and I'm not a guy that just loves that. You just got to love it. You do. I don't like being out in this environment. I really like it sunny and, and you know, nice and warm, you know, nice and warm. So well, that's I picked why. a good place to live. Yeah, I sure did, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We have uh, like three months of the year. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Hey. Okay. Here's a big question for you. What do Ryan Castle and Michael Jackson have in common? Oh, boy. Here come the text. Yeah, they're going to come. Here we go. It, uh, you'll find out at 9.50 on The Rock. BJ and Mix. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. And now, the Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and Michael Jackson have in common? Sometimes I hee <laughs> hee. <laughs> That's about as high as I can guess. Yeah. <laughs> that was it, dude. <laughs> Shimon. Shimon. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I'm doing now. Chicka, yeah, chicka, that's, that, that's, from, that that's from Ferris um, Bueller. Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. Oh, yeah. That's oh, the song. Oh, yeah. Oh, All somebody right. said they're both on fire. Yeah, they are. They both enjoy time with their monkey. <laughs> Bubbles. His name is Bubbles. Thank these are you. so far, these are very kind and appropriate. Yeah, because I don't know where else you could go with it. No, not at all. And both are bad. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, this is interesting to me that this is on the auction block. But Michael Jackson's black and white jacket from that 1984 Pepsi ad is hitting the auction block. It's where Jackson's, the Jackson's dance with some street kids. and Is this the Pepsi ad where his hair catches on fire when they're shooting I'm it? I'm not sure this is the same one. So he's done multiple Pepsi ads? Yeah, because this is with him and the Jacksons. Uh, and they even got him to record a special version of Billie Jean. But I don't know if this is the hair on fire one. They believe huh. this is going to go between two fifty and five hundred thousand dollars. But oh, okay, well I got uh, that. And, and uh, this is the one that had uh, a young Alfonso Ribeiro in it. He was in a uh, red jacket dancing Carlton? and moonwalking. Yeah, wow. But again, well, that should have been the main selling point. Right. Carlton wore this. I just feel like Michael Jackson, though. I don't know if I want any paraphernalia of his. I really feel like you know, you know, people go, "What are you doing?" Uh, but yeah, yeah. That's fair. Yeah. I don't understand why, guys. Yeah. Oh, I'll, exp uh, I'll explain when we get off the air. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you, you the go. Jackson 4 joke. Yeah. Oh, jeez. No, don't. <laughs> okay. Can we... How about just I the 12... Pass. How about the 12 pack? Can you just use that? That's... Yeah. Okay. Hard to... BJ and Biggs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 .9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How much does bankruptcy cost? Well, bankruptcy costs, of course, vary depending on what type of uh, case you're filing. There's a certain amount of, of, of court costs and other out-of-pocket costs that you're going to have in any case. Uh, the, the filing fees in a bankruptcy case are, are about $300, whether you file Chapter 7 or Chapter 13. Uh, one of the things to watch out for when you're shopping for bankruptcy attorneys or, or looking at the different cost options is that a lot of times, especially the really cheap uh, places, don't tell you up front 
upfront about all the court costs and whatnot that you're going to have to pay in addition to the attorney fees. So make sure that you get the full picture when you're talking, when you're comparing prices of bankruptcy of lawyers on what the attorney fees are, how much your court costs are going to be so that you can really make a true comparison. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. Some companies are big, others are small. To Robert Half, their hiring needs are equally huge. At Robert Half, our specialized recruiting professionals elevate their expertise with proprietary AI tools to transform candidate discovery, assessment, and selection. Whether sourcing talent locally or in any geography that works for you, Robert Half can pinpoint hard-to-find candidates in finance and accounting, technology, marketing and creative, legal, and administrative and customer support. At Robert Half, we know talent. Hidden fees, restrictive health care networks, and confusing coverage are signs that your health insurance isn't really working for you. Christian Healthcare Ministries is the biblical alternative to health insurance. With flexible, affordable health care programs and the ability to choose your provider without network restrictions, you can finally have freedom over your health care decisions. And when you join, you're surrounded by fellow believers who offer spiritual support. Learn more by visiting chministries.org slash solution. Like any good agent, we're here for the open house, for the closing, for handing over keys. But because we're Realtors, we're here for so much more. Agents who are Realtors volunteer at nearly three times the national average. We're working to broaden access to credit, increase affordable housing supply, and ensure fair housing for all. And Realtors are bound by a code of ethics. We're here for it all. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are. Auto Parts' new Brake Mess Select Pro brand raises the bar for the best aftermarket domestic brake pads and rotors available. For vehicle-specific friction formulations, quiet tech noise-canceling shims, and stainless steel hardware, choose Brake Mess Select Pro. Professional-grade brakes from the professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. <laughs> 